Hello everyone, welcome to another video, in this video I will be recapping this manhwa called Apocalyptic Super Farm. This story begins with a boy named Tian ran shopping at the supermarket while authorities warned residents about new cases in which animals had started attacking people due to an unknown virus outbreak. He had gone to the supermarket to buy more supplies because he knew something bad was going to happen. People were talking about how new diseases were claiming the lives of many residents. After buying the supplies, he loaded them into his van and headed home because he had to prepare dinner for his younger sister, Hannah. While he was driving, his fiancée called him to tell him that she could get him a good job in exchange for leaving Hannah at the orphanage. He refused because she was his most cherished family. Upon hearing this, his fiancée broke up with him as she didn't want to take care of a baby for nothing. While he was distracted, an animal crossed the road, and due to the high speed of the vehicle, the car collided with the animal. He thought it must have been a stray dog, but upon closer inspection, he realized it was a sheep that was still alive with its brains exposed. The sheep moved away from the road and into the bushes. He was scared but thought it was better not to call the police. After a while, he arrived home, and as soon as he got there, his sister came running to greet him along with their two dogs named Zio Bai and Zio Hai. She was happy because he had brought a lot of things. He gave her a small bag, and both of them headed inside. On the way, Hanan told him that she had filled the barn with hay, changed the water, and watered the crops and now she was very hungry. As they walked through the fields, Zio Bai started eating the harvest. Hanan hit him and told him that the harvest wasn't for him. On the way, they passed by the barn, and one of the bulls that had already been infected by the virus began to look at them aggressively. While preparing the meal, the radio informed them that tonight there would be the most spectacular total solar eclipse of the century. While they were eating, the reporter started the countdown, and the sky began to darken, the light went out, and it became very cold. The dog started barking, so they both went out of the house and were shocked to see a snowstorm in the middle of summer. He told Hanan to stay in the house while he went to lock up the cows and sheep along with Xiaohai. Both of them headed towards the barn, but on the way, the storm grew much stronger, and the sun was completely blocked by the moon, causing a bright light to appear in the sky. While he was amazed by the beauty of the eclipse, Xiaohai sensed that something was wrong. He realized that the plants, the snowstorm, and the sun were very strange. Zio Hai started barking to alert him that there was a mutant bull behind him. Thanks to the barking, he turned around and dodged the mutant bull's charge. He knew that he wouldn't stand a chance in hand-to-hand -hand combat against the bull. So, he fled to find his compound bow. While he searched, the bull attacked Zio Hai. He grabbed his bow and aimed at the bull, and at that moment, a blue interface appeared to guide him. He was startled and quickly shot the four arrows he had at the mutant bull. Despite having four arrows in its head, the bull was still alive and ready to charge again. While he searched for more ammunition, a window appeared again, indicating that he had zero arrows left. While he was distracted, the mutant bull seized the opportunity to charge at him. Zio Hai approached him and began biting his pants, barking towards the house. He understood that if the cow had suddenly mutated, then Hanhan was in danger. Inside the house, Zio Bai had also mutated. She didn't know what was happening and tried to calm him down. But Zio Bai became more aggressive and attempted to attack her. At that moment, Tian Ran appeared and gave Zio Bai a strong kick. He quickly grabbed Hanan to take her to a safe place as there was a lot of danger outside. After a few seconds, he arrived at a farm and another system window appeared, indicating that he had four lives within reach. He didn't know what this window was or why it had appeared like this, so he left Hanan in the house and told her not to go outside, no matter what happened. The number of lives within reach increased to five, and Zio Bai attacked him from behind. Zio Hai quickly came to his aid, and while they fought, Tian Ran began to flee from the mutant bull. Along the way, he grabbed an axe and positioned himself in front of a tree. The mutant bull charged, but he narrowly dodged it at the last moment, causing the bull's horns to get stuck in the tree. Just as he was about to deliver the final blow to the mutant bull, Zio Bai appeared from behind and bit it in the neck. The bull took advantage of this moment to free itself and also charged at him, impaling him with its horns. As his eyes closed, another system window appeared, stating that the end of the world survival game was in progress and more windows began to appear. Even on the brink of death, he was determined to defeat the mutant beast to save Hanan. But it didn't take long before he lost consciousness and another system window appeared, indicating that the final judgment game had successfully matched. The apocalypse game loaded successfully and he was chosen as the player. He possessed a poorly ranked level 1 mansion, so the system rewarded him with an ability called the Eye of Truth. To level up the fortress, he needed 8 million points. He woke up but didn't understand how he was alive. He remembered being impaled by the bull's horn, and while his clothes were torn, the wound was gone. Looking around, he saw that the mutant bull's body was split in half, and Xiaobai was unconscious. 
He didn't know what had happened after he lost consciousness, but the system informed him that this destructive power was beyond what humans could do. The system showed him that once he lost consciousness, his identity as a player was activated, granting him incredible power. With a single punch, he knocked out Zio Bai, and with a single swing of the axe, he decapitated the mutant bull. He had been dead, but his wounds had healed, and he had gained a power that wasn't his, thanks to the system. A window notified him that the game had loaded successfully, his shelter had been linked, the point center had been activated, and rewards for beginners had been distributed. A lightning bolt implanted information directly into his brain, informing him that the first round of the wave of destruction had ended, and the second wave was only zero days away. His shelter was his only fortress he could rely on. His task as a player was to survive the apocalyptic game and turn his refuge into a stronger fortress. Zio Bai was unconscious, and according to the system, both he and the bull had mutated after accidentally eating poison plants. After the mutation, their bodies were stronger, and their character was very cruel. He wrapped Zio Bai's body and put it in a cage to prevent further attacks. He entered the barn and saw that the electrical system was still not restored, and there was no mobile signal, but he still had the diesel generators. Using his mobile phone's light, he began searching for Han Han. After a while, he found her in a corner sleeping. She asked about Zio Bai, and he told her that Zio Bai was injured and couldn't meet with her right now. With reward points, he could buy some seeds that could be planted in poison soil, but these seeds were very expensive, and he currently didn't have many points. All supplies that had come into direct contact with the ground were already contaminated, and with the current disconnection, the situation outside wasn't going to change. He had to deal with all sources of contamination. He went down to the basement of his house, started the diesel generator, took one of the guns, and placed a walkie-talkie beside Hanhan before leaving the house to head to the city. Along the way, all the mutant animals began chasing him because they were attracted to him. Then an armed van arrived and scared away the animals with a turret before accelerating to stop his car. The soldier aimed the turret at him. He was a soldier from the army stationed at the central base. The soldier informed him that going outside was very dangerous and if he needed supplies, he could head to one of the designated supply points. The military was using planes and helicopters because there were many mutant animals. He was heading to the city because he was concerned about Zhang Lai, his ex fiance The city was in complete chaos, with only police cars patrolling the streets now. There was only one ambulance left, and the hospital had no more beds for patients. The emergency service had been deactivated because the current medical system was partially paralyzed and unable to cope with the side effects of the radioactive plants. The government had set up several supply acquisition offices throughout the city, and citizens had to stand in line, each with a purchase quota. But it was all chaotic, while some had nothing to eat, others fought over food. As he was on his way to Zhang Lai's house, a van appeared in front of him, and a chubby man got out to sell him food because he had seen him scavenging around the warehouses. The protagonist had a feeling that something was wrong with the food and told the man that if he took a bite in front of him, he would buy everything. The man became nervous and tried to force his way through the window. The protagonist pulled out a gun and told him that in this kind of business, nobody would blame him if he shot him. The man left resentful because he was having a bad day. Tian Ran finally arrived at his ex-fiancé's apartment. When he knocked on the door, she didn't respond, so he took the keys from under the mat and entered her home. She was a clean person, but her house was messy. She had eaten contaminated fruits and pills as she had purchased antibiotics from a disreputable pharmaceutical company. There were no traces of blood in the house and the door lock showed no signs of being forced, so he didn't know where she had gone in this chaotic world. He returned to his farm on the outskirts of the city, and the system informed him that the bonus from the refuge skill called the Eye of Reality allowed him to see all objects and creatures as data. The level 1 refuge skill permitted him to remotely control the refuge even if he left it. He could perceive the real-time situation in the refuge and all commercial products at any time. Currently, he didn't have many gains, and his greenhouse was in ruins, but he planned to upgrade the farm items using points. While he was tilling the land, his sister alerted him that the seeds were sprouting at an incredible speed. These were radiation-resistant tomato seeds that took 48 hours to mature and were radiation-proof. As they gained more points, both Hanhan and he could survive in this apocalyptic world. He had taught Hanhan several rules, she couldn't eat food given by anyone other than her older brother, she couldn't leave the farm without his consent. If she discovered an animal with a strange condition, she should hide, and she had to take good care of Zio Hai and not let him eat randomly. A system window notified him that the anti-radiation crops were ripe and needed to be harvested as soon as possible. These anti-radiation tomatoes were rich in nutrition, and long-term consumption could effectively improve physical condition. He took a bite of one of the tomatoes, and the fatigue from the work disappeared. Now, not only did he have food, but he also received attribute bonuses as the crops improved. 
In this system, everything worked with points. The number of points varied from one function to another, and the exchange system was the only source of points. The exchange system was mainly used for recovering crops, livestock meat, and minerals, dividing them into different prices based on different levels. Radiation-resistant crops were worth 1 point, ancient medicine crops were worth 100 points, powerful divine level crops were worth 1000 points, and super god level profit crops were worth 10,000 points. The system provided a complete service, from supply and distribution to recycling. With enough points, he could turn his farm into a first-class military base in the blink of an eye. The tomato harvest had gone very well but the ancient medicine grade crop harvest had only yielded 3 carrots because it had a maturity rate of only 10%. However, these carrots could eliminate all negative effects like poisoning and disease, including irreversible damage caused by negative effects. He thought about selling 70% of the food and redeeming it for points and keeping the rest in his backpack as a reserve. He sold 70% of the food and exchanged it for points, keeping the rest in his inventory, and recycling the 200 grams, he obtained a total of 2,000 points. As a reward for completing his first recycling, the system awarded him the title of Master Recycler and a small recycling robot. He initially thought the small robot was useless, but in the blink of an eye, the tiny recycling robot processed everything. His consciousness was connected to the system, so the robot could directly perceive instructions from his brain. Seeing how powerful the farming robot was, he considered earning more points to exchange for a combat robot for hand and safety. He returned home and prepared chicken legs to celebrate the success of seed germination. Now they didn't have to hoard food, they could plant it and even share it. However, if a stranger found out they were growing food at home, they would be fined and banned from eating for three days. Tian Ran gave the first chicken leg to Xiao Hai as a reward for protecting them. Han Han was happy but also sad because Xiao Bai wasn't with them. Tian Ran comforted her, saying that Xiao Bai was injured and couldn't see her at the moment, but as soon as he got better, he would come back to play with her. A system window warned him that someone was trying to invade his house, and using facial scanning of the intruder, he saw that it was Uncle Nan. He went out to ask Uncle Nan why he had come. Uncle Nan had come to ask for a favor, his house had been robbed, and all his food had been stolen. He couldn't afford to buy food from the supermarket because it was too expensive, so he had come to ask for some food. At first, Tian Ran refused because he didn't have many provisions, as the food he had planted had been destroyed by the mutation. However, after hearing that Uncle Nan had asked many relatives for food and hadn't gotten anything, he gave him a bag of instant noodles that he had left over. This food would only last him about five days. Although he didn't lack food now, in recent days, people had become unpredictable, and he still had to learn to hide his secrets. At night, Han Han and Tian Ran went to Uncle Nan's house to get some more food because in the past, he used to take care of their family. She remembered that he had a younger son who used to give her candy all the time. After a while, they arrived in the city. The streets were very quiet. As they got out of the car, Tian Ran overheard Uncle Nan asking his son where he had gone yesterday. His son was vomiting blood. Both of them approached the window, and Han Nan asked if Uncle Nan's son was going to die. He told her he was okay and not to look at him. The symptoms seemed as if he had accidentally eaten contaminated vegetables. At that moment, Tian Ran thought that he could be the perfect test subject to try the carrots. Desperate, Uncle Nan laid his son down while not knowing what to do. At that moment, a stone broke his window. Desperate, he tried to find the culprit, but his son pointed at the stone and told him that someone had thrown a bag of food. When he opened the bag, he found a note saying that if he wanted to save his son, he should feed him the carrot. Nan thought it couldn't be true since not even the big hospitals could cure him. As his son's eyes closed with his last strength, he asked to try eating the carrot to die slowly. Uncle Nan gave the carrot to his son, and as soon as he ate it, he began to vomit blood but slowly started to recover. Electricity was also restored, and mobile signal returned. Tian Ran picked up his phone and tried to call Lin Zhang, but her number was unavailable. She was unconscious in a van, the kidnappers had taken her phone and turned it off so they couldn't be traced. They were going to trade her for several months worth of food. As they were returning home, Han Han mentioned that Tan had been vomiting blood but improved immediately after eating the carrot. After his body improved, it changed from grey to blue in color. Upon hearing this Tian Ran thought that she was a girl who loved animation, describing things in a graphic way. At that moment, something jumped onto their car. It was a mutant monkey. Tian Ran swerved off the road, and the monkey tried to attack him, but he pulled out his gun and shot it, causing it to fall onto the hood. He seized this opportunity and accelerated the car to ram the mutant monkey into a tree, then finished it off with the gun. Upon approaching the monkey, he saw it had a serial number. This was unusual since there were no farms or zoos nearby. 
he suspected it might be linked to the Ran Pharmaceuticals. Both of them returned home, and Tian Ran told Hanan to watch cartoons while he attended to an important matter. He went up to the attic of their house, where Xiao Bai was. He gave Xiao Bai a carrot to eat since it could eliminate toxins from toxic vegetables. A lightning bolt struck the house, causing Hanan to flee in fear and search for Tian Ran. She climbed up to the attic and, seeing him from behind, startled him. But at that moment, she was shocked to see Xiao Bai dead on the floor. With tears in her eyes, she asked if they had more carrots that could save lives. He told her that carrots couldn't save life forms that had already been infected with mutations, so Xiao Bai was dead. The next day, they burned Xiao Bai's body and buried him next to a tree. Hanhan was deeply affected by the death of her dog and spent the entire day watching television. Meanwhile, Tian Ran went out to harvest the mature anti-radiation crops. In total, he harvested 500 kilograms of anti-radiation crops and 10 kilograms of ancient medicine. He sold all his crops and upgraded his dilapidated greenhouse to a level 2 greenhouse. The system warned him that his refuge's defense level was only at level 3, which could protect against small wild animals but posed a high risk. Therefore, it recommended that he build a defense system as soon as possible. Improving the security of the farm should be his top priority, as the current crop level was not very profitable in terms of point growth. Without hesitation, he upgraded the refuge's walls, installed wall-mounted electric grids, and bought a cruise radar. He was running low on points and needed to get some mechanical guards for Hanan. Currently, he didn't have enough points to buy them, so he decided to sell the grain from the storage, knowing that he could replenish it later if he ran out of points. With the points from selling the grain, he purchased a level 1 hummingbird and a level 2 bloodhound. The hummingbird had great precision and could patrol the area as a sniper, while the bloodhound had strong ground attack capabilities, making it the perfect guardian for Hanan. He returned home with Xiao Bai, the bloodhound, and told Hanan that from now on, Xiao Bai would follow her everywhere and protect her. In the offices of Ran Pharmaceuticals, a scientist informed the CEO Liang Tianyu that subject number 7 was now capable of penetrating 5mm steel plates. The vice president, Ren, was not satisfied with the lack of medical equipment donations. Chen Yu was concerned that if Ren found out, she might report them. He ordered the scientist to instruct Chen Nan to keep an eye on Ren Xiao because he couldn't allow her to ruin his business plans. If this plan succeeded, he could gain a substantial fortune. The vice president quickly found out and went to the director's office to express her concern. She mentioned that the medical system in Nancheng was paralyzed, and as a company, they should guide employees to help the hospital instead of conducting experiments on animals. Chan Yu, being a businessman, aimed to make profits, and he didn't believe that current medical methods could play a significant role in this global-level disease. Both of them could develop a solution and get rich from it. They agreed that if she could compare notes with the work and increase the workforce, the progress of this project would be much faster. She accepted but with the condition of going to the laboratory and checking the progress. She arrived at the laboratory using a card given by one of the scientists. The lab director showed her that Subject 7 was the only one who hadn't gone insane, and after the experiment, his power had multiplied by 10. One of the workers rushed in and explained to the director that they had a problem. He left as an emergency had arisen. Due to high security, the director left her alone in the room. She activated her earpiece and contacted one of her men to scan for a secret entrance. She entered the secret room and was shocked to see subject 51, Lin Zhang. Back at the farm, Han Han and Tian Ran were harvesting corn since they had worked quite a bit. He prepared roasted corn for them, recalling that Han Han's appetite had surpassed his recently, likely due to the system's cultivation. After eating radiation-resistant vegetables, their body data had increased significantly. If she continued eating at this rate, he thought she would turn into a giant Barbie. While they were eating, a window notified him that they had a visitor. The visitor was Tan, who had come back with the food he had given him the other day. He had come to give him some food as a thank you gesture for lending them instant noodles the other day. Tian Ran asked him where he had gotten the food, and Tan replied that someone with a kind heart had left it in his backyard. Tan had come to ask for the car since he had heard that in the city of Nangchen, someone had opened a new market with many good things. He wanted Tian Ran to accompany him because he didn't have a driver's license, and he didn't know the way. Tian Ran was fine with taking him because he had originally planned to go to that market to inquire about the situation. Also, now he didn't have to worry about leaving Han Han alone since he had robot guards taking care of her. He told Han Han to stay at home and not open the door to strangers. In return, he promised to bring her some candy. She replied that it was okay because her new dog Dubai was incredible, but she wanted to greet Tan. She hid in the car and waved at Tan. After seeing his body, she was impressed. At that moment, Tian Ran took her out of the car, and they left. On the way, Tan took out his phone and started sending messages. When he noticed that Tian Ran was looking, he quickly put it away. Tan told him he didn't have enough money, so he was asking a friend for a loan via his mobile phone. 
While Han Hin was watching TV, she remembered that Tan could also change color. The last time she had seen him, he was green, and now he was red. On the way, Tan Ran gave him some money because he had helped his family a lot in the past. Tan didn't want to accept it, but Tian Ran insisted and gave it to him. To reach the city, they had to follow the straight road. But just when it was time to turn, Tan took the wheel and told him that the straight road was blocked. He recommended taking the right road instead. Tian Ran found it strange because he had been going on this road all the time, and it was a major road. Unless a natural disaster had occurred, it shouldn't be blocked. Nervously, Tan told him that a friend had told him the road was blocked. Tian Ran was suspicious, so he told Tan to call his friend because he wanted to hear it for himself. Tan said that if they didn't turn now, it would be too late, and he asked Tan Ran to trust him. Seeing his insistence, Tian Ran trusted him and turned onto the right road. In the distance, a man dressed as a guard knew that something had gone wrong, and Tan had betrayed them. However, he had already sent some men down the other road because he knew something like this might happen. While they were driving, Tan apologized to Tian Ran for betraying him. He explained that his father had been kidnapped by the men from Ran Pharmaceuticals. They had asked Tan to get Tian Ran away from the farm so they could capture Han Han and use her to obtain the cure for the mutation. At that moment, a car started following them at high speed. Tian Ran finally realized that the questions Tan had asked him earlier were meant to find out if the farm was protected. He planned to settle the score with Tan later, but for now, he just wanted to eliminate all the guards who had entered the farm. A few days ago, Tan was so hungry that he ate a contaminated apple that had come into contact with the ground. His father was thanking the gods because a bag of food had fallen from the sky and saved his life. He thought that if there really was a god, then this global catastrophe shouldn't have happened, and the bag that had fallen from the sky had been delivered by someone who didn't want to be identified. He left his house and went to a friend's house, asking Tan to check the surveillance cameras at his house under the pretext that someone had broken in and stolen from him. He entered his friend's house, accessed the computer, and saw a van parked near his house, and he knew whose it was. He quickly returned home and told his father that Tan Ran was the one who had saved him. He had planned to tell Ran Pharmaceuticals about the medication he had and that they were paying a lot of money for special medicines. He wanted them to be able to survive in this apocalyptic world because with just one bag of food, they wouldn't last long. His father slapped him and told him that if he did this, he would condemn Tian Ran and his little sister. After fleeing for several minutes, two cars blocked the road, so Tian Ran stopped the car and got out with Tan. Then a man named Nan got out of the car and told him that he knew he had the medication for radiation poisoning. He asked Tian Ran to form an alliance because they wanted the medicine to sell and make money. He gave him two options, the first was to cooperate with them, and together they would make money, and the second was to forcefully hand over the medicine. Tian Ran told him that he only had one medicine, and he had used it to cure Tan. Nan didn't believe this, so he took out his phone and ordered his men to enter the farm and force-feed his little sister a radioactive fruit. With a murderous look in his eyes, Tian Ran told them that he hated people who threatened him. He had planned to kill them all. Seeing that he had no intention of cooperating, Nan ordered his men to attack him and cut his tendons to let him die slowly. At the farm, Nan's men began to demolish the walls using an excavator. Furious, Tian Ran started to beat them up, and at the farm, Han Han was throwing explosive rocks. Thanks to the improved condition from consuming the super crops, they were no match for him. Over the past seven days, he had only been eating the super crops, so his statistics were much better than those of an average adult. Not only had his strength and speed improved, but his bones were now much harder and nerve speed was much faster. He grew tired of using physical force and pulled out a gun to eliminate the guards, as he didn't consider them important. Nan managed to dodge the bullet and took cover behind a rock. At that moment, Tian Ran approached and opened his inventory to reload his gun, then he eliminated the last guard. At the farm, Han Han had taken care of all the intruders with the help of the robotic pets. She thought about hiding the bodies because if her brother found out she was a violent child, he might not like her anymore. Tian Ran eliminated everyone except Nen, whom he intended to torture for information. Nen revealed that General Tian Hu was in charge of everything and kept it a secret. Currently, only the guards knew about this matter. Recently, he had a disagreement with another vice president, and now he was trying to use his authority to elevate his position to a higher level to claim credit in front of the central office and expel the vice president from South City. The Rand Company had a monopoly in the South, but it remained only a subsidiary of a conglomerate. The vice president had a backer in the central office, and Tian Yu didn't dare to take this matter to the central office because if the information leaked, his reputation would be ruined. Tian asked Nen to take him to Tian Yu. He called Tian Yu and told him that they had captured Tian Ran but he only wanted to talk face to face and wanted to see Uncle Nan. Tian Yu agreed to meet at Warehouse 78. 
Tan disguised himself as a guard, and the three of them headed to the warehouse. After a few minutes, they arrived at the warehouse, and Tan told Tan Yu that the messenger had been knocked out and thrown from the car, and Nen had a stomachache, so he had been asked to bring Tan Ran to the warehouse. Tan's father tried to warn them that if they spoke, no one would come out alive. Upon seeing this, Tan Yu knocked him to the ground, and his men began to beat him. At that moment, Tan Ran broke through the ceiling and pointed his gun at Tan Yu. Tan Yu thought that he got betrayed by Nen. Then the protagonist asked him how he had become the head of Ran with such a low IQ, and Tan Yu revealed that the man he found next to Tan was Nen. All of Tan Yu's guards rushed to help him, but they were eliminated by Tan Ran. After eliminating all the guards, Tan Ran also took down Tan Yu. Tan and his father began to apologize for betraying him but he had no intention of harming them, as he didn't consider it necessary. He told them to stack the bodies while he went to fetch the car. After a few minutes, they piled up all the bodies except for Nen's. As they approached Nen, he attacked Tan's father with a piece of glass to the leg. Nen knew he was going to die anyway, so he was willing to take one with him. He attacked Uncle Nan with the glass, but at that moment, Tan appeared and took the full force of the attack. Tian Ran arrived immediately in the car and rammed Nen against the wall. Using his last bit of strength, Tan gave Tian Ran some candies for Han Han and then lost his life. Uncle Nan, in a fit of rage, took the glass and slowly ended Nen's life. Then, they burned down the warehouse and fled. In the Ran Pharmaceuticals offices, one of the men informed the vice president that Tian Yu had died and all the bodies had been burned. She knew Tian Yu had messed with the wrong person, but she was pleased and planned to celebrate tonight with several bottles of wine. Tian Ran bought a bomb button and attached it to Uncle Nan to prevent him from betraying him in the future. They both returned to the farm, and Han and hid all the intruders' bodies, making excuses to avoid being discovered. However, Tian Ran knew everything, so he told her that she didn't need to hide them because he didn't care about what she had done. He explained that she was his most important family, and he was also pleased to see that she could defend herself. She told him that she had started seeing bright lights emanating from people. Her brother was blue, Xiao Hai was green, Tan was red, and Uncle Nan was gray. Those with a red light were malicious people. She had gained this ability a week ago thanks to the radiation-proof vegetables. The crops redeemed by the system had no side effects and had a very high mutation probability. Both Tian Ran and Han had eaten these foods for a few days, and their physical functions had improved. Hanan had developed the ability to see the emotions of other people. Her ability was very useful, so Tian Ran asked her to immediately alert him if she saw anyone with a red light from now on. After this conversation, they went to eat, and Tian Ran revealed to Hanan that from now on, Uncle Nan would stay with them and help with their farming work. Uncle Nan told her that his son had gone elsewhere to atone for his sins, and she understood that anyone who had intimidated her brother wouldn't last long. Uncle Nan's hands were already stained with blood, and all he wanted was to avenge his son. To achieve this, he was willing to be Tan Ran's guardian. Fifteen days had passed since the cataclysm, and the death toll had risen to 43 million. The federal government was actively mobilizing food reserves, and soilless farming technology was being put into large-scale production. Bai Jingyan's father called him to inform him that Tan Yu had died, and now the mutation process had accelerated. The military police headquarters had captured a level 5 mutated beast in the southern mountains. This was unusual because the highest level they had previously investigated was level 3, which was the result of Bai's artificial catalysis. In the deep mountains and old forests where there was no human intervention, radioactive vegetation was abundant. Even the lowest level species that cannibalized each other had accelerated the intensity of mutation. Due to this, existing human technology was vulnerable to an unknown natural evolution. Therefore, his father assigned him Tian Yu's laboratory. He wanted him to combine his technology with Tian Yu's to extract the virus. The records from two days ago were completely normal, and the cause of Tian Yu's death was related to those two days. However, Tian Yu had deleted the surveillance records from those two days, so all leads had been lost. Today was the day the vice president was supposed to receive the new head to show him the location for the new institute. This new head was Bai, and he had come along with his assistant Kiwi. He asked her to take him to the location of the new institute. On the farm, Tian Ran had unlocked a variety of edible fish, including rare fish that were difficult to obtain before the apocalypse. They couldn't afford to eat this type of fish before, but now they could have as many as they wanted. They planned to use the excavator to dig a pond. First, they marked the land with a line, and Uncle Nan asked how old Xiao Hai was because he had grown much bigger than before. This was strange because he was an adult and couldn't keep growing. Tian Ran realized that Xiao Hai had grown thanks to the radiation-proof crops. A notification warned him of three visitors with a threat level of eight. The visitors were the vice president, Bai, and his assistant Kiwi. They had come because Bai liked the location of the farm, and it was very large. After a few minutes, Tian Ran arrived. 
Bai asked him to open the door because they needed to discuss an important matter. He refused, saying he was busy. The general manager of the RAN company said she had come to buy his farm. She didn't care about the price, whether it was supplies or a house in the city center. Tian Ran refused because he liked living on the farm and had no intention of selling it, even for a mountain of gold. Huey got angry and banged on the door. The security system activated, but Tian Ran told it not to attack. At that moment, Bai approached and slapped him, telling him not to act this way without permission. Seeing this, Tian Ran asked Huey to come closer and then punched him because he had hit his door, and now they were even. He asked them to leave if they had no other business to discuss. Upon seeing that he was not willing to sell the farm, Bai apologized for the intrusion and gave him his phone number in case he changed his mind. After this, the three of them left, and Tian Ran did not expect the people from Ran Pharmaceuticals to find his farm so quickly. The visit might have been to assess the situation or just a coincidence, so to clarify his doubts, he ordered the hummingbird robot to follow them. Now, there were only 10 days left until the next destruction season, and the crop area was producing steadily and the aquatic area had started to be excavated. Currently, they didn't have much meat stored, so they needed to develop a livestock area as soon as possible. Tian Ran prepared a meal using the frozen meat he had, and Han Han prepared a sesame sauce. Now that it was winter, Uncle Nan told them not to wear such light clothing and that they couldn't afford to eat meat every day, as the food they had wouldn't last long if they continued at this pace. Tian Ran shared one of his secrets with him. He revealed that the food they had was not ordinary because if a person consumed it regularly, their body would undergo changes, like not feeling cold, improved physical capacity, and even the development of unusual abilities. Now that Uncle Nan had started to consume this food, Tian Ran was eager to see the changes it would produce in his body. Upon hearing all of this, Uncle Nan thought he had stepped into a movie. Currently, reality had become somewhat like science fiction due to the disaster, and the food didn't grant them superpowers but rather evolved them. Tian Ran told him that the people from Ran Pharmaceuticals had paid him a little visit today. Upon hearing this, Uncle Nan trembled in fear and thought that the only way a useless old man like him could stand up to them was by eating the farm's food to become stronger. That same night, Tian Ran left the farm on his motorcycle and headed towards the hummingbird's location. Ren took Bai to her villa and told them that tomorrow she would find them a new home. Then, she went to rest in her own room while being followed by the hummingbird the entire time. She thought it was some mosquito, so she ignored it and took a hot shower. After admiring her beauty in the mirror, she began to apply a facial mask while the hummingbird flew by her side. Eventually, she started to get tired, and by paying more attention to the sound, she realized it wasn't a mosquito but a beetle. She opened the window to see if it would fly outside. As she breathed in the fresh air, she saw Tian Ran next to her window. Quickly, he entered through the window and covered Ren's mouth to prevent her from calling the bodyguards. Then he clarified that he was going to release her but warned her not to try asking for help, as he could end her life before the bodyguards could arrive. Ren told him that he could take all the money on the table along with the jewelry and gold because she was willing to cooperate with him if he didn't harm her. With the money and jewelry, he could buy food for a long time, but unfortunately, he hadn't come for the money. Hearing this, Ren thought that he had come to abuse her, so she began making all sorts of excuses to avoid this. Tian Ren covered her mouth and asked for information about the person responsible for Tian Yu's murder. Despite all of Tian Yu's informants being dead, she didn't know where he had come from, so she asked if he was one of Tian Yu's men. He replied that Tian Yu had done him a great favor in the past, and that's why he now wanted to avenge his death. He had heard recently that Ren had been investigating the cause of his death, so he had come to her house to obtain information. Ren told him that both she and the police had investigated his death but couldn't determine who the killer was. Upon hearing this, Tian Ren tried to blame her, as after Tian Yu's death, she had taken his place. She defended herself by saying he had no evidence to blame her. She also told him that Tian Yu had made many enemies lately, so it wasn't surprising that someone had taken his life in revenge. Currently, she had no suspects because Tian Yu had destroyed all the documents and surveillance recordings related to recent conspiracies, so without a lead, it was impossible to determine the suspect. As they talked, Tian Ran began to hear footsteps, so he quickly knocked out Ren. The footsteps were from the housekeeper and Kiwi, who started forcing the door. After several seconds, they broke the door and entered the room, but to their surprise, Tian Ran had managed to escape through the window in time. He climbed down from the window without making a sound, but still ran into Bai. Tian Ran was surprised to see that he had been discovered despite leaving no trace. Bai told him that he knew of his presence thanks to Ren's window gravity detector. He knew that the culprit would jump out of the window after being discovered to avoid a direct confrontation. 
While Bai was distracted, Tan Ran took the opportunity to attack him using his fist, but to his surprise, Bai blocked the attack with his knee. The arm bones couldn't compare to those of the knee, and according to Bai's calculations, Tian Ran's arms should have been broken due to the direct impact of 700 kilograms, but despite this, he showed no signs of injury. He was confused, so he asked for an explanation. Upon seeing that Bai had managed to block the attack, he quickly realized that Bai knew how to fight. Despite his now enhanced physical abilities surpassing those of an ordinary person, he couldn't fight against Bai because he was running out of time. So, he told Bai that he didn't have time this time, but the next time they met, he was going to beat him up. Bai quickly attempted to attack him because he didn't want to let him escape, but to his surprise, Tian ran through dust in Bai's eyes, leaving him without vision. Taking advantage of Bai's disorientation, Tian Ren made his escape. After several seconds, the bodyguards arrived in the garden. Bai realized that he was a very intelligent man and his physical condition was perfect. The bodyguards helped Bai to his feet and he told them not to pursue him as he was very fast. After washing his eyes, Bai went to Ren's room to check on her condition. Then, he prescribed some medication and instructed the maid not to call the police as they had no evidence. At that moment, one of the bodyguards entered the room and informed him that the thief had stolen his hard drive. Using his motorcycle, Tan Ran left the villa and went home. Upon arriving at home, he turned on his laptop, disconnected from the internet, and connected the hard drive. The folder containing the hard drive was labeled Experiment Notes, and it was not a confidential file from Rand Pharmaceuticals. According to the report, although many living beings had died, Bai still firmly believed that radioactive food caused changes in the body. In his view, the beings that had died had taken the wrong path in their evolution, and that's why they had died midway. He firmly believed that he could find the right path and was willing to sacrifice human lives to achieve this goal. If he achieved this objective, he could lead humanity towards a new civilization in the wake of this disaster, and humans could compare themselves to gods, with their lives extending up to 300 years. Bai attempted to trace any signal from the hard drive but was unsuccessful. To ease Kyuhi's worries, he told him that the hard drive wasn't of great importance to him as it only contained some old data. However, Bai knew that if someone were to read the reports, people would discover the true reason he had come to Nancheng. According to Kyuhi, Everything seemed very strange since they had just arrived in Nancheng and had already been attacked. He asked Bai if it could be the work of person number 7. Bai told him that if number 7 had wanted to harm them, he wouldn't have sent a rookie and the person who had stolen the hard drive had great physical abilities, but his skills were those of a novice. After reading the reports, Tian Ran realized that Bai shared the same thoughts as him, and he immediately realized that experiments on humans had already begun. The next day in the courtyard, animals of level 1 began to appear, and upon seeing the animals, Han Han asked Tian Ran where they had come from. Tian Ran thought it was complicated for Han Han to understand the system, so he told her that he had a magical pocket from which he could take out anything. Han Han instantly understood this, and upon seeing it, Tian Ran told her that this was a secret, and no one else should know about it except her. In the meantime, she started to paint a rabbit, and upon seeing this, Tian Ran got upset and told her not to play with food. She didn't consider them food because they were very adorable. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran began to name her favorite foods and told her not to get attached to food as loss could be painful. Han Han listened to him and returned the rabbit, and at that moment, a system window appeared to inform him that the farming area had produced a rare product called Autonomous. He headed to the cornfield and found the albino corn, which was an extremely rare mutant product, with a 1 in a 100,000 chance of appearing. Consuming this corn put a person in a state of fury, and their strength, speed, and reflexes increased tenfold for 20 seconds. This corn was just like Popeye's spinach, and Tian Ran began to look for more as he wanted to find more rare crops. After searching for a while, he found nothing, as this type of rare item was very hard to obtain. To increase the probability of obtaining more rare items, Tian Ran initially considered increasing the planting density by 50%. But then he thought it was better not to do so, as it would reduce the quality and yield of the crops, making the seedlings weak. So his best option was to continue working honestly. Meanwhile, Ren finally recovered, and upon thinking about what had happened, she became furious and was determined to catch the culprit and give him a punishment. If she wanted to discover the culprit's identity, she couldn't use conventional means, but luckily, she found a strand of Tian Ran's hair that had stuck to her clothing. She went down to the living room where Bai was sipping tea, and she thanked him because the massage technique he had taught her had worked, and she no longer felt any pain. She also told him that she had chosen a new location for his laboratory near the farm they had visited, as it was a peaceful and isolated place. 
Bai thanked her but knew she had come to ask for something more. She wanted Bai to help her find a person in Nancheng who had the same DNA as the hair sample she had. According to Bai, using a hair to find a person was like searching for a needle in a haystack because it would take a lot of time and resources to collect hair from all the citizens of Nancheng. Bai asked her if that person was very important to her, and she replied that the person wasn't very important, but she just wanted to find the bandit who had attacked her. Upon hearing this, Bai said it wasn't difficult, and he was willing to help her catch the culprit. The next day, Bai went to the experiment room, and the scientists injected a 10% dilution reagent into an experimental subject. The muscle fibers of the experimental subject began to thicken, and cellular activity increased thousands of times. The system started collecting data from the subject, and little by little, the experimental subject began to change. The first change occurred when his corneas multiplied and then his eyes. The system informed by that this was a compound eye and also that the test subject's genes had been contaminated by other organisms. The body of the experimental subject began to mutate and suddenly grow, causing him to lose total control of his body, leading him to madness. Due to the enormous strength that the test subject had, he broke free from the chains. Gradually, the experimental subject started to become even more insane and began hitting the glass in the room where Bai was observing the experiment. The system informed him that the V-shaped virus was a complete failure. Then, the experimental subject started hitting the protective glass of the experiment room. Several seconds later, it shattered into pieces. The subject of experiments began to slowly approach the room where Bai was, but at that moment, he gave the order to the system to destroy the subject of experiments, causing the system to use some chemicals and make the body of the subject explode into pieces. In a mansion in the city, where a private party was taking place with very important businessmen from the city. Among the guests present at the party were three children talking. One of the children asked his friend named Jing Ming why he had left his little brother alone. Jing Ming replied that he didn't consider him his brother because he was useless. Young Ming's brother was Bai, who was alone and leaning against a pillar. The two children, upon seeing that Jing Ming didn't consider him his brother, decided to mock him. They grabbed him by the head and started drowning him in the mansion's fountain. While they were drowning him, they began mocking him calling him a coward. At that moment, Jing Ming appeared and asked them to be careful not to leave a mark on him, since even though he was useless, he still belonged to the family, and as a member of the family, he had to live up to his parents' expectations. The children pulled Bai out of the water and reassured him not to worry. With water in his eyes and mouth, Bai looked at Jing Ming and asked him to let him go, addressing him as his brother. Upon hearing the word brother, Jing Ming became furious and ordered the two boys to drown him again. Bai woke up in the middle of the night and started begging his brother not to hit him, realizing that it had all been a dream. He calmed down and then, while looking at the cooling tank containing the V-virus, he thought that the virus was becoming more stable every time, which meant that soon he could create the perfect mutant to defeat his older brother. At the same time, the newsman informed all viewers that today was the 19th day since the appearance of the V-virus. He also revealed to everyone about the discovery of a hundred mutated cattle corpses in Nanchai City. While Han Han watched these news with Xiao Hai, Tian Ran caught her attention and asked why she was watching news instead of cartoons and when did she start doing it. Han Han replied that her brother always treated her like a little girl. She also explained that now she was paying attention to the catastrophe as she couldn't hide behind her older brother forever. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran was slightly surprised and praised her by saying that Han Han could perceive people's bad thoughts which was already helping her older brother. Han Han hugged Xiao Hai and explained that she wanted to grow up quickly to help her older brother even more. She also added that Xiao Hai was becoming stronger every day, so she no longer had to worry about becoming strong herself. Tian Ran thought to himself that after observing this period of time, Xiao Hai showed no tendency to become violent, and he concluded that the change in body shape was due to the evolution of radiation protection and agriculture. He sighed and felt a little relieved. He also explained to Han Han that he and Uncle Nan were going to continue digging the pond, so he advised her that if she got hungry, she could look for snacks in the fridge. He left, and after an hour, while Han Han was lying on top of Xiao Hai, she started feeling hungry. Looking around, she saw a box on a table. She began wondering what was inside that box. This box contained two level 4 divine gain seeds. She approached the table and upon opening the box, she thought the seeds were shiny nuts. And now that she had them, she started seeing the seeds as a delicious meal. Without thinking twice, she took both seeds. She brought one seed to Xiao Hai's mouth and explained that now they both could eat one. With one hand, she put the seed in her own mouth, and with the other hand, she put the seed in Xiao Hai's mouth. Immediately, she spat out her seed because it was very bitter, and with her other hand, she pushed Xiao Hai causing him to swallow the seed in the process. After eating the seed, Xiao Hai lay down on the ground and slowly began to feel sleepy. So without thinking twice, he decided to go to sleep. That same night, noises of breaking boards started coming from the warehouse. Due to the noises, Uncle Nan woke up and decided to go check what was happening. 
when he turned on the flashlight, he saw a trail of blood on the floor. Following the trail of blood, he saw that there was a mutant animal hiding in a corner. Upon seeing the light, the animal looked at Uncle Nan with a murderous gaze. He got scared and started wondering what had happened and how a mutant animal had entered the farm. What he didn't know is that this animal was Zio Hai, who quickly jumped up and tried to attack. Uncle Nan managed to react in time and dodge the attack at the last second, causing Zio Hai's body to collide with the wall. His flashlight fell to the ground, and when Uncle Nan tried to pick it up, he realized that the mutant creature was a black dog. Upon seeing this, he began to wonder if it was Zio Hai, who now was much bigger and had gone mad, had red eyes, large sharp fangs, and claws as sharp as a knife. Zio Hai started staring at Uncle Nan, making him feel scared. He quickly realized that Zio Hai had mutated into something like a wolf. At first, he wondered if it was a mutation, but then he thought it couldn't be because he was different from ordinary mutant beasts. Seeing that he showed signs of no attacking again, he decided to calm him down. He extended his hand and explained that he was Uncle Nan. But instead of calming down, Zio Hai took on an offensive stance and started looking in all directions. Seeing his reaction, Uncle Nan began to approach him to pet him and asked if he was hungry. He tried to calm him down by telling him not to be afraid because he would bring him some food. Zio Hai began to growl and bark, making Uncle Nan realize that he was in danger. But to his surprise, instead of attacking him, Zio Hai jumped out the window, breaking the glass in the process, leaving Uncle Nan both surprised and confused. He started shouting at Zio Hai not to go towards the door since it was made of iron and the walls were electrified with fences. But just before he could finish speaking, Zio Hai stood in front of the door and then gained momentum as he started climbing up the wall. Then, with a big leap, he managed to avoid being electrocuted by the electric fence and finally escaped from the farm, leaving Uncle Nan with his mouth open, wondering how he had been able to climb such a high wall so easily. Tian Ran also left the house because of the broken window glass, and he asked Uncle Nan what had happened. He replied that Zio Hai was in trouble, and also explained that suddenly he had gone crazy and ran out of the farm. Uncle Nan also asked Tian Ran why Zio Hai had suddenly gone crazy and why he looked different from ordinary mutant beasts. He also added that even in that mutant form, Zio Hai was still able to recognize him, leaving Tian Ran surprised. Han Han also came out of the house and explained that Zio Hai had left because when she woke up, she saw that he wasn't by her side. Tian Ran reassured her not to worry and also explained that Zio Hai had gotten bored of being at home for so long, so he would return after taking a short walk. He also asked her to come back home to sleep since everything was going to be fine, but instead of listening to him, Han Han replied that Zio Hai never left her side when she slept, and she also asked what Uncle Nan meant when he said that Zio Hai had changed. Tian Ran looked at her feet and noticed she was barefoot, so he asked why she had left the house without shoes. Then he picked her up in his arms, and she explained that she was worried about Zio Hai because she didn't want him to become like Zio Bai. Tian Ran asked her not to overthink it and also inquired if Zio Hai had eaten anything special recently. Han Han explained to him that she always remembered what her older brother said. All they could eat was farm food, so she also added that the only special thing Zio Hai had eaten was what was inside a glowing walnut box. Tian Ran thought it must be that level god seed version 4, and quickly concluded that Zio Hai must have evolved. He also began to question why he had gone crazy. He called the system and asked if eating agricultural seeds version 4 had any side effects that caused organisms to lose control of their bodies. But unfortunately for him, the system did not respond to him. He told Han Han that he would go and also promised her that he would bring Zio Hai back, so he asked her to be good and go back to bed with Uncle Nan. Han Han started crying and asked Tan Ran if he was really going to bring Zio Hai back. Upon hearing this, he reassured her by saying not to worry because he was going to take care of bringing Zio Hai back since it was part of the family. At the same time, while Zio Hai was running through the forest near the farm, he began to think that it was very hot and also that he had a strong desire for fresh meat. Zio Hai couldn't control his animal instincts and wanted to bite the throat of every living being, but he still decided to restrain himself since he couldn't harm humans because if he did, then he could never return to his little master. While running through the forest, a person with a white hood belonging to a cult saw him running through the woods and quickly realized that it was a holy beast. The man smiled and thought that this must really be the sacred beast of the oracle, which meant that if he managed to capture it, then his god would be very pleased. At the same time, Tian Ran left the farm on his motorcycle, and his security guards informed him that Zio Hai was not in the area. Upon hearing this, he began to question why Zio Hai was not in this area. He thought that he had to find him quickly because if the military police discovered him, then Zio Hai would be eliminated. At that moment, someone caught his attention. It was an elderly woman wearing a hood who belonged to the same cult as the man before. She approached Tian Ran and asked if he was looking for a black wolf dog. Tian Ran looked at the old woman and started wondering what she was doing here. Then he asked her in which direction the dog had run. 
With a smile, the old woman asked Tian Ran if he knew the truth about this disaster. Tian Ran ignored her words and only asked the old woman to tell him in which direction his dog had escaped. He also added that he wasn't interested in knowing anything else. Upon hearing this, the old woman explained that all of this was due to people having done too many bad things and angering the gods. As punishment, the gods had sent this disaster. She also added that this disaster would not stop until all human beings were destroyed. She told Tian Ran that if he wanted to save himself, then he must join the self-help society and repent devoutly before God to have a chance of surviving. Tian Ran began to wonder what kind of new missionary scam this was. He felt curious, so he asked the old woman if there were any conditions to join the self-help society. With a smile and a sinister aura, the old woman replied that the rescue association was for all living beings and also had a hierarchical membership system. Different levels required different membership fees. She explained that the fee ranged from 300 to 300,000. The higher the fee, the higher the level would be, and the closer one could be to God. And with higher levels, salvation probabilities would increase. As the old woman knew that Tian Ran was the owner of the Holy Beast, she told him that in order to join the society, he only had to bring the Holy Beast. Tian mocked the old woman by telling her that if she had so much free time, then she should learn more about brainwashing and deception before using them to deceive people. Inside, he began to wonder if the old woman was referring to Xiao Hai as the holy beast. The old woman got angry and asked Tian Ran if he was disrespecting God. Instead of wasting any more time, he started his motorcycle and apologized to the old woman since she had arrived a little late to the party and he no longer had time to play with her. He also asked her if salvation was through piety, so while he was riding away from her on the motorcycle, he explained to her that the only thing that would save him in this world was himself. While the old woman watched Tian Ran ride away on the motorcycle, she thought to herself that those who did not believe in God were going to fall into hell forever. The next day, while Tian Ran was smoking a cigarette next to his truck, he heard a sound coming from some bushes nearby. As he approached the bushes, he saw a wolf cub next to its mother's corpse. He thought it had been hit by a car while crossing the road. Upon closer inspection, he noticed that the wolf was dead and her little cub was trying to nurse some milk as it was very hungry. Tian Ran sat down and picked up the still alive puppy. He realized that the mother wolf had been dead for several days. He thought that the puppy was very tenacious. He picked up the puppy with both hands and felt identified with it since they had both lost their parents. The puppy started to fall asleep and Tian Ran decided to take him home with him. At the same time, Xiao Hai arrived at a residential area and attacked a guard by biting his leg. This guard was not alone as he had two companions who were very close to him with weapons to save him from Xiao Hai's attack. One of the guards asked his friend to hold on a little longer. The guard went to the laboratory and after several minutes, Bai came out of his lab and asked them how a mutated beast could have entered the area. One of the guards explained that Xiao Wu became addicted to smoking and went to the forest to smoke and threw his cigarette butt at the beast, causing it to become violent and start hurting people. Bai began questioning how dare the beast cause such a disaster. The guard also explained that the beast was hidden in the grass, which is why Xiao Wu didn't see it. He also informed him that they had already contacted military police to take care of the beast. Bai quickly turned to the guard and asked if the mutant beast was really hidden in the grass, to which the guard responded affirmatively. Upon hearing this, Bai thought that low-level mutant beasts simply roamed following the body heat of living creatures without reason. So he realized that this beast must be a high-level mutant beast. Furthermore, he noticed that it had only bitten the guard's leg instead of killing him. Therefore, he quickly concluded that this beast knew the danger of weapons and was trying to use the guard's safety as a means to stop them. This made it an extremely intelligent mutant beast. He thought that if they captured him and studied him in the laboratory, then they could overcome the instability of the V-Virus. He looked at Xiao Hai and wondered in his head if it was the perfect mutant creature he had been looking for. He gave the order to the guard to go call everyone as they needed to capture the mutated beast alive before the military and police arrived in the area. Bai smiled and also asked the guards to equip themselves with anesthesia guns and sedatives as they needed to capture the beast alive at all costs. One of the guards gave Bai a sedative gun, and he ordered everyone to be careful and only aim for the limbs. Bai aimed his sedative gun at Xiao Hai, and after stabilizing his pulse, he shot. But to his surprise, Xiao Hai immediately realized he was in danger and jumped away from the area, dodging all the sedative darts. The guard took advantage of Xiao Hai being in the air to shoot one of the sedative darts through his tail. Xiao Hai attacked the injured guard, who narrowly evaded the attack. Bai started reloading his gun with more sedative darts, and Xiao Hai took this opportunity to quickly flee into the forest. At the same time, Hummingbird No. 2 informed Tian Ran about the discovery of large dog tracks 700 meters southeast. He quickly turned his motorcycle and headed southeast. 
Once he arrived at the area, he got off the motorcycle and saw giant dog tracks on the ground with bloodstains that were still fresh. It didn't take him long to realize that the tracks belonged to Zio Hai. He began to wonder what had happened and how Zio Hai had been injured so severely. At the same time, Bai and the guards began to follow Zio Hai in the off-road vehicles. Seeing Zio Hai's incredible speed, Bai leaned out of the car window and thought that no mutated beast could move at such a fast pace. He couldn't help but smile as it became more and more exciting. Zio Hai was leaving behind muscular lines as he ran, making him look like a beautiful creature. Upon seeing this, Bai felt the duty to catch him at all costs. At the same time that Zio Hai was fleeing through the forest, the robotic hummingbird started sending signals back to Tian Ran to inform him that they had found their target. He stopped the motorcycle and thanks to the cameras of the robotic hummingbirds, he saw how Zio Hai was being chased by an SUV. He asked the robotic hummingbirds to zoom in on the image, and thanks to this, he could see two armed individuals inside the SUV. He ordered the robotic hummingbirds to get closer as he wanted to see the faces of the pursuers. Once the robotic hummingbirds approached the SUV, Tan Ran was able to see by. As soon as he saw him, he recognized him and realized that once again it was the technology fanatic. Many questions came to his mind, he began to wonder why he was chasing Zio Hai, and quickly came to the conclusion that he wanted to catch him in order to investigate him. He opened the system's inventory and asked it to take out the albino corn. After several seconds, the system handed him an albino corn. While he was looking at the albino corn, his goal became not letting Bai get close to Zio Hai. While Bai and the guards were following Zio Hai, one of the shots fired by the guards hit near Zio Hai. The guards shot again, but Zio Hai dodged them all by taking small zigzag jumps. Bai gave the order to guards number one and number two to surround the mutant beast from both sides, as he planned to lead it to the old factory ahead. The guards received the order and separated from Bai, starting to surround Zio Hai. He quickly noticed their intentions. Zio Hai made a big jump and using a tree trunk for momentum, managed to land on the roof of one of the SUVs. He then started hitting the roof and grabbed the guard's arm through the window. Seeing this, the other guard informed Bai that car number two had fallen. The guard drove the SUV towards the car where Zio Hai was and began shooting. Just before the bullets could hit Zio Hai, a hand engulfed in white flames appeared and stopped the bullets with its fingers. The hand threw the flame-coated bullets towards the other guard. The hand belonged to Tian Ryan, who had eaten albino corn that had driven him into a state of madness. He currently had 26 seconds left before the effect wore off. Bai stopped his car and got out to see what was happening. He was surprised and started wondering what the white light was. Zio Hai looked towards the white light and realized it was his owner. Tian Ran prepared to attack as he only had 20 seconds left before the effect of the corn wine wore off. With a leap, he jumped out of the car and in the blink of an eye knocked out the three guards. Now he only had 12 seconds left before it ended. Bai got scared and shot towards the white light wondering what that thing was. Just when there were 5 seconds left, Tian Ran appeared in front of Bai and punched him hard in the jaw, making him bleed. Now with only 2 seconds left, he quickly moved away from Bai. He realized that this effect also had its side effects. Bai, who had his face covered in blood, got up using his last strength and thought that luckily he had been able to block the attack because otherwise his life would have been in danger. He aimed at Tian Ran with his gun and decided to eliminate him as soon as possible since he was too dangerous. At that moment, Zio Hai started jumping, and just before Bai could pull the trigger of the gun, Zio Hai appeared and gave him a strong bite on the throat. But despite this, Bai didn't release the trigger and managed to shoot a bullet towards Tian Ran, causing it to hit his shoulder. Seeing this, Zio Hai bit even harder. Several hours later, Tian Ran opened his eyes and the first thing he saw were Zio Hai's sharp teeth. He was on top of Zio Hai who was carrying him. He caught Zio Hai's attention and when he turned around, he dropped Tian Ran to the ground, leaving him confused. Then Zio Hai fell to the ground unconscious. With his last bit of strength, Tian Ran got up and while covering his bullet wound with one hand, asked Zio Hai if he was okay. Zio Hai's body started growing, leaving him shocked. Quickly, he called out to the system and asked what was happening. But to his bad luck, the system did not respond to him. Inside Zio Hai's body, his DNA began to change because he had someone else's red blood cells in his body. These red blood cells belonged to Bai, whom Zio Hai had bitten on the neck. Gradually, his DNA started changing thanks to the Divine Level Seed. On the outside of his body, a white silk began wrapping around his body, leaving Tan Ran confused. Little by little, the silk covered Zio Hai's entire body until it formed a cocoon. Upon seeing the cocoon, Tan Ran finally realized what was happening. At the same time, in an emergency room, where the patient's vital signs were very low, the doctors informed his friends that things were very bad at this moment since he had been severely hit in the face, his pituitary gland had received an electric shock and his brain had sunk. The patient was by, and the doctors also added that the neck wound was fatal and it was a miracle that he was alive now. 
The doctor apologized to Ren explaining that they had done their best but the opponent was really complicated. Ren asked the doctor to stop giving explanations, and then added that the duty of the guards was to protect with their lives the safety of Investigator Bai, who was now lying in the hospital bed with his uncertain life or death. The doctor apologized again to Ren and explained that at that moment, Investigator Bai was so eager to catch the beast that he took the advance team and left first. When they arrived at the scene, the advance team suffered great losses and only Doc Huey survived. Ren decided that she had heard enough excuses, so she asked the doctor if anyone had seen what the attacker looked like. The doctor revealed to her that the attacker was a person enveloped in a white light and very fast. Ren turned to the doctor and asked him that if he was going to make up a story, then he should come up with a decent one before deceiving people. The doctor apologized, crouched down, and told her that he was telling the truth. Upon hearing this, Ren got angry and explained to them that she hadn't paid a lot of money to see doctors playing ball. While they were talking, the surgeon left the room and informed Ren that Bai's heart rate was plummeting and bleeding points had reappeared on his skull. She turned to the surgeon and ordered him to resuscitate Bai right away, but the surgeon explained that it no longer made sense since Bai couldn't be saved. The surgeon asked Ren to go into the room and see what he wanted to say in his final moments, leaving Ren and Doc Huey shocked. The doctor injected Bai with a dose of epinephrine, causing him to slowly open his eyes. Once he fully opened his eyes, he saw Doc Huey and Ren standing by his bed. Doc Hu panicked and told him that they hadn't succeeded yet, so if they failed now, he wouldn't even be quietly sent to the grave as a complete human body. Bai stared at Doc Huey and replied that dying like a monster was no different for him, so he decided to bet once again as he didn't want to lose this way. The doctors decided to inject him with 5 milliliters of viral agent V and prepared the handcuffs and the bomb collar. They put handcuffs on his arms and placed the bomb collar around his neck. The doctor asked Bai if he needed to call his family again. Bai responded that it wasn't necessary since they were just people who shared the same blood and that was no longer his home. He then gave the doctor the order to begin. The doctor injected the 5 milliliters of virus V into the veins of his arm, causing him to start writhing in pain. Gradually, his red blood cells and DNA began to change, making him feel a terrible pain. Seeing Bai writhing in pain, Ren couldn't help but feel afraid. On the other hand, Doc Huey simply closed his eyes so as not to continue watching. At the same time, Zio Hai's cocoon began to slowly break, leaving Tan Ren confused. After several minutes, a white aura started to surround the cocoon, and from that cocoon a paw emerged, surprising Tian Ren. This paw belonged to Zio Hai who slowly started to emerge from the cocoon and now had a humanoid form. Upon seeing Zio Hai in his new form, Tian Ran became somewhat confused and asked if it was his dog. Zio Hai emerged from the cocoon and began staring at him intently, creating tension in the air. Then, with one of its paws, it grabbed Tian Ran by the shoulder right where he had the wound, causing him to go on high alert. The grip strength of Zio Hai was so strong that it even fractured his bones, causing immense pain. At the same time on the farm, while Han Han was waiting at the entrance of the house, Uncle Nan asked her to behave well and not wait any longer and go to bed to sleep, explaining that Zio Hai was not far away and would be back with Tian Ran very soon. Uncle Nan started getting a cold so he told her to go back to bed as she might catch a cold because it was very cold outside. While Han Han was looking at the door of the house, she replied that she wasn't feeling cold, and that now she was in good health, and all she wanted now was to wait here until her older brother returned. To show him that she wasn't cold, she held Uncle Nan's hand and told him that if he didn't believe her, he could touch her hand to see if it was warm. By touching her hand, Uncle Nan realized that it was warm. He realized that eating food from the farm greatly improved a person's health. Han Han replied to him saying that now she was a super evolved woman. Uncle Nan sat Han Han on his lap and decided to accompany her and wait for Tian Ran to come back home. Deep down, he thought being next to Han Han was very pleasant and warm. The following day dawned, and the sun's rays began to penetrate the glass windows. One of the rays dazzled Han Han's face as she was still sleeping next to Uncle Nan. After several minutes, Uncle Nan woke up because he heard Han Han calling her brother. She ran out of the house and upon leaving, she saw Zio Hai and Tian Ran at the gate. As she approached a little closer, she was amazed to see Zio Hai in his new human form, carrying Tian Ran who was injured. Her powers informed her that Zio Hai had just evolved but he was still unable to control his strength. As a result, Tian Ran's wounds burst open and fractures occurred. Tian Ran told them that he had brought back Zio Hai, leaving Han Han and Uncle Nan speechless. Zio Hai entered the house and put on a shirt and pants. Now he belonged to a Czechoslovakian wolfdog breed and was in the evolution phase. Han Han started rolling him around and began asking why he had suddenly changed. Then she also asked him to lift her up high. Zio Hai lifted Han Han onto his shoulders, and while she was playing with his ears, he thought that she was still very mischievous. Zio Hai's type of evolution was atavistic. 
He was 3 years old, had 30 points of strength, 10 points of intelligence, 42 points of speed, 10 points of spirit, and 5 points of hunger. According to the system evaluation, he was a Czech wolfdog with human genes who had genetically evolved. Thus, he would improve dramatically at will. The system noted that there were no upper limits to these data. Tian Ran looked at Xiao Hai and realized that he had gone crazy because the genes of his ancestors had put him in a state of fury, and for that reason he had left the farm to not harm anyone. He began to question if Bai's genes had integrated into his body when he bit him on the neck. While sitting on the bed, Uncle Nan appeared and informed him that he had brought the box of medicine he had requested. Tian Ran smiled and asked if he could sterilize the scalpel because he wanted to remove the bullet from the wound on his shoulder. Uncle Nan sterilized the scalpel and handed it over, also asking him if he was going to remove the bullet directly and mentioning that there was a risk of infection. Tian Ran replied that nothing would happen, then slowly inserted the scalpel into the wound and successfully removed the bullet. He then commanded the system to produce an ancient medicinal carrot, causing a carrot to appear out of thin air in his hand, leaving Uncle Nan astonished and wondering why a carrot had suddenly appeared. Tian Ran began to eat the carrot, and Uncle Nan started wondering if this was the magical medicine. After eating the carrot, Tian Ran's skin began to wrap around the wound, healing the open wound and broken bones in a matter of seconds. He moved his arm that was previously injured and noticed that it no longer hurt, and also saw that the broken bones had healed. The genetic cells of any living organism on the planet constantly replicated, fused together, and old cells died off while new cells took their place and continued living. During the fusion replication process, the cell remained stable for most of the time and fully copied all elements from the old cell. Under certain conditions, a new gene would suddenly appear in a location instead of the original gene. Genetic mutation resulted in two outcomes. The first one was beneficial development. Just like Han Han and Sio Hai allowed their bodies to add new and beneficial functions to their original ones, he called it evolution. The second outcome was maldevelopment. Just like many mutated beasts in the world at this moment, which had terrifying limbs and great strength but fatal defects in their life genes. Even if those beasts regained their consciousness by luck, they wouldn't live for long. At the same time, Bai woke up and using his strength broke the shackles, then he sat on the bed. Now his chest was surrounded by sharp bones, while he was touching his chest, he realized that he had survived. His heart started beating normally. Seeing that Bai had gotten up, the doctors informed everyone that this was a miracle since no human being had been able to retain consciousness after being infected with the V virus. While Bai was checking his heartbeats, the doctor explained to him that his success this time showed that his experiment would move on to the next stage. Ran and Doc Huey entered the room to congratulate him, but Bai explained to them that it wasn't so simple. He also added that he had survived but it didn't mean that the V-shaped virus hadn't mutated perfectly. Its mutation was still failing. Now he had some strength and speed, which were better than those of ordinary people, but the structure of its body would still undergo negative changes. He revealed to everyone that he only had seven days left to live, and if he couldn't find that perfectly mutated creature and obtain its DNA, then seven days later, he would die. Upon hearing Bai's explanation, Ren and Doc Huey were terrified. While Bai was putting on his gear, Doc Huey informed him that Officer Yuan from the Nanchang military office was already here. He also asked if it would be inappropriate for them to investigate the intruder and alert the military. Bai replied that he was skilled in various deadly martial arts such as boxing, Muay Thai, Sambo, wrestling, and Sanda. He also added that he had the 65 kg Golden Dragon Badge issued by the Sana Federal Association, and now thanks to mutation, his reflexes and physical condition were more than 2.8 times superior to those of ordinary adults. In other words, Bai could already be called the strongest person in the world, as there weren't many people in the world who could defeat him head-on. He also explained that the person who had attacked him, in other words, couldn't be considered human at all since his power source was the same as that of the perfect mutant wolf dog. While looking at the ground, he thought that the perfect mutations of the man who had attacked him came from the same power source, which explained why the man had come to rescue the wolf dog. Bai revealed to Doc Hue that the man's actions reminded him of a specific person. Upon hearing this, Doc Hue asked if he suspected that those two people were identical. He added that the results of their investigation ultimately proved just the opposite. Bai stood up and explained that he himself had his own senses of caution, and the virus in the form of V had not yet allowed him to reach the state of evolution. But if that information could help him find the perfect mutant, then he could still afford the consequences. Both left Bai's room and headed towards the exit. Along the way, Bai explained that he didn't have much time left. Upon reaching the exit, they came across a woman who was looking at the door. Bai addressed her as Officer Yuan. Upon hearing Bai's voice, she turned around, and he apologized to her for making her wait. Once Yuan turned around, she saw Bai's mutant appearance. He began to advance towards her and with a smile, he asked her not to be scared by his appearance, leaving her speechless. She was Yuan Wen, the senior police officer of Nancheng. 
she stared at Bai's body intently and then asked him if this is what he had referred to when he had told them that it would interest the military. Bai apologized to her and started unbuttoning his shirt, surprising her. He showed her the condition of his heart and explained to her that in his current state, it would be impossible for him to survive. And he also mentioned that the bone spur would gradually grow with the poor development of his body, and when his heart was pierced, it would be the day of his death, which meant he didn't have much time. He showed her a hair sample and explained that in return, he expected her to do everything possible to help him find this person, and the sooner the better. Yuan put her hand on her chin and started thinking, and after several seconds, she smiled and replied to him that it would be a pleasure to work with him. At the same time, at the farm, Tian Ran bought 19 powerful level 4 divine seeds while Han Han and Xiao Hai were sleeping. The seeds that Tian Ran had bought were powerful level 4 divine seeds. These were cherry tomato type seeds, the soil quality requirements were fertile and high quality soil. The watering requirements were pure water for irrigation at least once a day, the growth cycle was 18 days, and the survival rate was 18%. The effect was to promote genetic fission of the consumer, enhance the beneficial elements of genetic fission, stop the development of genetic malignancy, and favor evolution. Tian Ran couldn't help but smile as he looked at the seeds he had bought. In other words, he thought that the direction of gain from level 4 divine seeds was promoting evolution. What it meant was that this was simply the beginning of a new era for humanity. Tian Ran smiled again and then clenched his fist where he had the seeds, thinking that if humans were to become gods with this kind of thing in the future, then he would be the god who created the gods. The planting conditions were very harsh, so if he wanted to plant the seeds, he first needed to use many points to improve the level of the terrain. After reviewing the cost, he realized that it was very expensive, but he had no other choice but to buy it. So without beating around the bush, he spent 95,000 points to buy land improvement coupons, leaving him with only 5,680,000 points. He used the 19 ordinary land coupons and improved the current land to good quality. This good quality land was nutrient-rich black soil that could grow crops above level 4 and had the effect of increasing crop yield below level 3. While Tian Ran was looking at the system window, he realized that there wasn't much time left for the arrival of the second wave of destruction season. He also thought that growth agents were very expensive. But still, he bought 12 growth agents. These growth agents had limited effectiveness in promoting the maturation of level 4 crops. So also, he added some more agricultural robots to speed up the planting process, but he still had to save points to buy common seeds and improve the farm. The agricultural robots started planting the seeds, and while Tian Ran was watching them, he thought they had to do everything possible for the crops to mature faster before the second wave of destruction arrived. At the same time, in a city with luxurious and tall buildings, two men from the cult reached a giant door. One of the men asked his lord named Hua Xuying if it would be possible for him, with such a humble body, to meet with the Lord God. Hua Xu replied to the men that he only needed to tell the Holy Lord exactly what he had seen, and the Holy Lord would issue his own judgment. He turned towards the men and also added that even though he hadn't attracted the required number of believers this week, as long as this information was true, he could still receive enough gifts from the Lord God. The man replied that it was wonderful and thanked him as well. Then the giant door began to slowly open, and Washu thought that his family could endure for another month. Only those who worshipped the Lord God with devotion could survive in this end of the world. Washu and the men entered the building and began walking down a path. After several minutes, they arrived inside where they saw two more members of the cult conversing. Washu approached one of the members as the Holy Lord and explained that the pure sheep had sent a letter saying that a new holy beast had been discovered. A man wearing a robe with golden symbols turned around, along with the person who was talking to him and was not part of the cult. Both turned towards Washu, and the man in the golden robe asked him to tell them everything. After hearing everything, the man in the golden robe began to applaud, then he clasped his hands together and with a smile on his face, he told the others that this way, the power of the main god would be even stronger. The mysterious man next to him congratulated him addressing him as the holy lord, and also added that with the nourishment of the new holy beast, the lord god could complete its emergence as soon as possible. The mysterious man's pen began to glow due to the reflection of light, and he asked the Holy Lord about those recent shipments. Behind them was a rather sinister hole, and the Holy Lord gave permission to the mysterious man to take them all, as the god had grown tired of eating those desserts. He also added that they only needed to capture the sacred beast and sacrifice it to the god, and then they just had to wait for the god to emerge. At that moment, a chilling voice began to emerge from the hole behind them, asking them for food. This voice belonged to Mr. God, the Holy Lord thanked Mr. God for his mercy, and Mr. God began to roar as he wanted to eat the wolf cub as soon as possible. A year ago, on a day like any other, the news anchor informed viewers about a news story in which a tragic accident occurred on a winding mountain road in the suburbs of Nancheng City. A private car plunged off a 100-meter high cliff on a curve of the mountain road. 
The car overturned and exploded. It was confirmed that three people were traveling in the car, two adults and one child. Upon seeing the news, Can Ran was somewhat shocked. Then, the news anchor also added that when local firefighters arrived at the scene, they found that both adults in the car were dead. While Tian Ran was cutting vegetables to prepare the meal, the news girl also mentioned that the little girl had been thrown and hung from a branch near the scene of the incident, so she survived and was sent to a local hospital for treatment. Tian Ran looked at the television and thought about how the poor girl had to suffer the pain of losing her parents at such a young age. He decided not to think about it anymore and started wondering what time it was. He looked at his watch and thought that his parents must have been really excited about the trip since it was already 6 o'clock when they had promised him they would be home by 3. He began to wonder why they were taking so long. He left the knife on the table, picked up his phone, and started calling his parents. But the mobile insurance company informed him that the number he had dialed had been deactivated, so she asked him to call again later. After preparing the food, he placed it on the table and called his parents again. But once again, the insurance company informed him that they couldn't locate the number he had dialed. He called again, but the insurance company kept giving him the same information over and over. At the same time, in a place on the ground was a broken phone surrounded by flames. The firefighters arrived and began extinguishing the fire coming from a car. Due to the fire being too strong, the firefighters decided to ask for help. Near the cars was Han Han's injured body lying on a stretcher. The firefighters informed the ambulance drivers that this girl had fainted hanging from a tree and added that she was very small and had a minor fracture. The firefighters quickly loaded her into the ambulance and took her to the hospital. After treating Han Han, one of the nurses asked her colleague why the girl wasn't saying anything. Her colleague replied that she was too young and initially didn't remember anything, and now she was experiencing significant trauma. The other nurse asked her where her family was, and her colleague explained that she had checked the gene bank and discovered that she was a girl from an orphanage who had been adopted just two days ago. The nurse realized that in other words, the deceased were the adoptive parents. She began to wonder what kind of curse Han Han was, and also thought that the couple who had adopted her had been very unlucky. The two nurses were talking next to Han Han's room when the nurse asked her colleague to stop talking. Then she told her that according to rumors, the orphanage was not suitable and now they didn't have all the necessary paperwork to take her away. Upon hearing this, the other nurse asked if the police had notified the family of the deceased. Her colleague replied yes and also added that they would be arriving soon. While they were talking, someone interrupted them to ask for directions to the morgue. The person who had interrupted them was Officer Yuan, who was accompanying Tian Ran. She asked the nurses if they could show them the way. The nurses led them to the morgue, and once they arrived, Tian Ran was shocked to see his parents' charred bodies. Yuan turned to Tian Ran and with a sad expression lamented the loss of his parents. He couldn't believe what his eyes were seeing. He told Yuan that they were not his parents and that she must be mistaken. He asked her where the little girl had come from. Yuan apologized to him and asked him to accept her deepest condolences, then decided to do a DNA comparison to confirm it. Tian Ran replied that his parents must have disappeared, so he decided to wait outside until the results came out. As he sat outside the room, he put his hands on his head and tried to assimilate the situation. After several minutes, someone grabbed him by the hoodie. The person who had grabbed him was Han Han. Tian Ran looked into her eyes, she called him older brother and apologized to him. Then with tears in her eyes, she explained that it was all her fault. If only she hadn't asked for help from her aunt when the dean was hitting her, and if her uncle and aunt hadn't taken her away, none of this would have happened. Just before she finished speaking, Tian Ran hugged her and comforted her by telling her that it wasn't her fault. Yuan appeared and informed him that the results were already available. She revealed to him that their father-son relationship was 99%. Tian Ran couldn't help but cry upon hearing this as he hugged Han Han, and Yuan once again asked him to accept her condolences. Back in the present, a scientist who was carrying some reports arrived at Bai's office and informed him that the comparison had yielded results. Bai turned towards the scientist, who explained that they had found the intruder. The scientist revealed that the intruder was Lai Tian Ran, a 26-year-old man. A graduate from Jingnan Normal University with excellent academic performance, two years ago Lai Tian Ran's parents adopted a four-year-old girl. On their way back home, his parents died in a car accident. Lai Tian Ran returned to Nancheng from the province of Jingnan, took over his parents' inheritance, and became a farmer until today. While Bai was looking at the reports, he asked the other scientist if that was all. The scientist informed him that there was nothing special about Tian Ran's experience. She told him that even if the DNA test proved that he was the one who had stolen the USB memory, how could they be sure that this was the same person who had attacked him the other day? Bai replied that this man named Lai Tian Ran seemed extremely ordinary, but no matter how he looked at it. An ordinary person could not simply fight against him without losing, and that night Tian Ran showed incredible physical conditioning. This was simply something that an ordinary person who had been mediocre for over 20 years could not have. 
he realized that Tan Ran had been hiding for over 20 years, but judging by his skills, he was quite inexperienced so this possibility could basically be ruled out. So only the second explanation remained, Tan Ran's physical condition had dramatically improved in recent times, and those who could do this had the perfect mutation. While Bai was reading the reports, he explained to the scientists that this could also explain why the attacker wanted to save the perfectly mutated wolf dog. He came to the conclusion that his perfectly mutated power originally belonged to the same source. He also added that the power of an organization that could create two perfect mutants was too terrifying. The scientist asked him if their thoughts had been diverted from the beginning, or perhaps their power of perfect mutation was caused by something other than science. Bai asked her if she was saying that the perfect mutation of the intruder had not been caused by the V-virus. The scientist explained to him that the probability of the V-virus causing a perfect mutation in a living being was originally only one in a billion. The number of perfect mutants found worldwide, including Beast King, was only about a dozen. She asked him if it was possible for there to be two perfect mutants in Nanchang, and also added that this success rate was too high as it did not comply at all with probability factors. Bai began to look at the report, and then smiled and explained to her that in this world, there existed a second type of key that could make people mutate perfectly. At the same time, Yuan also brought reports about Tian Ran to her superior. She stood at attention and while her superior was looking towards the shelf, he thought that if there really was a successful case of human evolution, then he wanted someone who would also be of interest to his army. So he gave Yuan the order to send people to monitor both Bai's movements and those of Tian Ran. At the same time, while Tian Ran was loading his basket with vegetables, he also bought two growth agents. As he spread the liquid on the soil, a system window appeared to inform him that the maturity time of level 4 divine crops had been shortened by 50 hours. In the blink of an eye, the crops grew, and another system window appeared to inform him that there were still 128 hours left until maturity. While Tian Ran and Han Han were looking at the crops, Uncle Nan caught their attention to tell them that he felt something was wrong with Xiao Hai. Both approached the house, and Tian Ran asked Uncle Nan what the problem was. He explained that in these past few days, Xiao Hai had started climbing onto the roof, and today he had tried to get him down by shouting but he didn't want to come down. He also added that usually when Xiao Hai climbed onto the roof, he would always obediently come down when instructed, but today he was not paying any attention. Tian Ran stared at Xiao Hai and realized that his reaction was very similar to the eve of the first disaster. He began to wonder if after evolution, Xiao Hai had a stronger danger detection. So, to clarify his doubts, he asked the robot guards to search within a 1km radius around the estate. The robot started flying and left the farm to check the area. Tian Ran's phone began to vibrate, and he started wondering why people were still sending text messages at a time like this. He also wondered what kind of telecommunications fraud had sent him the message and which company was still working in the midst of the apocalypse. As he took his phone out of his pocket and read the message, he was shocked, dropping the basket of vegetables he had picked from the garden to the ground, leaving Uncle Nan and Han Han confused. With a murderous aura, he began to wonder if someone was playing a prank on him. Seeing Tian Ran angry, Han Han started wondering what had happened. He took his truck and left the farm, and at that moment, a camera saw him leaving the property. This camera belonged to Bai's team, one of the guards informed him that the target had left the farm, and also told him that using top-level spy planes like the stealth drone to monitor a simple farm was excessive. Bai asked the guard to look at the screen, and while pointing at Tian Ran's crops, he asked if they were harvests. Then he explained that drones were only unmanned miniature reconnaissance drones. Bai was surprised to see such small devices present in a deteriorated farm. He asked the guard if he hadn't realized that the crops on this farm could survive even in toxic soil. In today's world, except for plants that grew without soil, all other plants contained the V-virus, and these plants had serious consequences for people who accidentally ingested them. But instead, the crops on this farm had not only been destroyed but also carefully maintained. He also noticed an unusual smell everywhere, making it difficult to tell if there were heavy weapons on the farm. Tian Ran had previously severely injured him, so he thought it was better to be cautious this time before being sure of his strength. Seeing the security of the farm, the guard began to wonder if it still really looked like a farm, as it had defensive systems similar to a military base. The guard asked Bai if he was ready to attack the farm. He thought that now that he fully understood the structure of the estate, attacking would be easy. Bai ordered the guard to destroy all the defenses of the farm with microwave shock weapons. Now that Tian Ran was not present on the farm, the perfect mutant beast was alone, so the probability of capturing it alive was very high. He decided to start acting, and several minutes later, helicopters arrived at the farm, and the guard ordered the pilots to activate the pulse particles three times. 
First, the helicopters scanned the area, and then they sent out pulse particles three times, causing a wave to deactivate all electrical devices on the farm, including the electric fence. Then Bai opened the helicopter door and thought that now not a single electrical component on the farm would function normally. He ordered the soldiers to descend to the farm. They all jumped from the helicopter using parachutes and headed towards it. At the same time, Tian Ran went to his parents' tomb that had been desecrated. Seeing it with his own eyes, he truly realized that it was no joke. While looking at the photograph of his parents on the gravestone, he began to wonder who was the thief. At that moment, a notification sound made his cell phone vibrate. Upon turning on the phone, the person who had sent him messages previously told him that he now had his parents' ashes in his hands. And now he had sent him a message saying that he knew he had confirmed that his parents' ashes had indeed been stolen. Another message from that person arrived, and he told him that he would only give him a couple of days to think about it. He wanted him to give him the holy beast, one of his arms and one of his feet in exchange for his parents' ashes. He looked at the message and thought for several seconds. While looking at the text messages, he thought that this person must have some mental retardation because his mother and father would be very angry if they found out their son had agreed to trade his own pet for their ashes. He thought that if he were to do this, then his parents would come and beat him in his dreams. He began to wonder if the person who had stolen the ashes was referring to Zio Hai as the holy beast. He didn't take long to come to the conclusion that it had to be Zio Hai, since when he escaped from the farm the other day, many people saw him. He smiled and replied to the text message asking if he really believed he could control him with a box of organic substances. He also told him that he could get rid of his parents' ashes if he wanted, but he promised him that he would find him and make him bow before his parents' grave and force him to apologize. While looking at his parents' tomb, he thought that now that this person had set his eyes on Zio Hai, he feared he knew Zio Hai's power and wanted to get rid of him at any cost. He began to wonder if the old woman in the village had spread the news of a perfect mutant appearing in the forest, since unlike them, if a monopolistic company like Rand Pharmaceuticals wanted to retaliate against him, they wouldn't have resorted to such wasteful means. While he was lost in his thoughts, a system warning appeared to inform him that the farm was being invaded. The system also informed him that the opponent had modern and sophisticated weapons and the threat level was 99. At the same time, Bai's soldiers started entering the farm. One of the soldiers informed him about detecting a thermal image inside the house. Upon hearing this, Bai gave them the order to surround the house. After surrounding the house, one of the soldiers signaled to the others and asked them to wait a moment as the thermal image had disappeared. This heat source belonged to Han Han and Zio Hai. He had climbed onto the roof of the house, causing the soldiers to wonder where the heat source had gone. While carrying Han Han on his shoulders, Zio Hai looked at the soldiers with a murderous look and began growling. The soldiers who had surrounded the house began to glow red in Han Han's sight. Upon seeing this, she explained to Zio Hai that these people were bad people who had come to harm them. She possessed a power called the Eye of Truth. While she was looking at the soldiers, she ordered Zio Hai to turn all the soldiers into compost. He started roaring to let her know that he understood the order. At the same time, Bai's soldiers began breaking windows and then threw flash grenades inside through the broken windows. Once the flash grenades were activated, one of the soldiers ordered others to search inside the house. The soldiers forced open the doors of the house and began to enter the interior, but to their surprise, there was no one inside. The soldiers looked at Bai and asked him what they should do now. He started thinking and while crouched down, he realized they were in danger. He ordered the soldiers to crouch down. Just before the soldiers could follow the order, someone started shooting from outside the house through the broken windows, killing several soldiers. Bai started running and realized it was an ambush. While shots were taking the lives of the soldiers, Bai and one of them managed to escape from the house by jumping out of one of the windows. Upon reaching the outside, he began to wonder why the pulse weapons had not worked. Once he looked ahead, he saw three executed corpses of three of his soldiers. At that moment, someone with an evil smile appeared in front of him. Bai looked at the smile and then saw Tian Ran and Uncle Nan next to four battle robots. Upon seeing this, he began to wonder why there were battle robots in a normal farm. Seeing the shape and design of the robots, Bai started to question if this was the best intelligent technology that existed in the world. Tian Ran, upon seeing that the intruder was Bai, began to think that he had come here to seek revenge on him. He asked Bai if he had spent a long time investigating him in the farm. Bai replied that it hadn't been very difficult to search for his information and also praised him for exceeding his expectations tonight. Now that Tian Ran had returned, Bai told him that he had nothing more to say. He also explained that he wouldn't live much longer anyway, he would die regardless if the plan failed. Dying in this place wasn't any different from dying in a hospital bed. He also added that everyone was here on their own accord, and the winner would be king. 
Uncle Nan asked Chan Ran to kill Bai since he belonged to the pharmaceutical company Ran. He began to advance towards Bai and his soldiers and explained to Tian Ran that the people in this company were not good people. But Tian Ran stopped him and with a smile asked Bai where his parents' ashes were. Upon hearing this, Bai became somewhat confused and asked what ashes he was talking about. Both looked into each other's eyes and started wondering what was going on. Bai got up from the ground and Tian Ran asked him if he was the person who had stolen his parents' ashes. Upon hearing this, Bai asked if he was joking. Tian Ran began to wonder what was happening and if Bai didn't have the ashes, then who did? At the same time, someone furious threw their phone to the ground. This person was the holy lord or better known within the cult as Xiao Sheng, who began cursing Tian Ran. While hitting the phone, he started wondering how he could ignore his own parents' ashes. He explained to the men next to him that if someone had stolen his parents' ashes, he would have dedicated his whole life to finding the thief. While he was hitting the phone, the man looked at his companion next to him and asked why Xiao Sheng was acting this way. But upon seeing his expression, he realized that he didn't know either. Xiao Sheng explained that he had asked Tian Ran to bring him a sacred beast in exchange for his parents' ashes. But since Tian Ran had refused, now the snacks that his mother wanted were lost as a result. While hitting the phone, he thought he was useless. Upon seeing this, the two men approached him and tried to calm him down. One of the men asked him to calm down, as they had brought new goods which they were going to deliver to Mr. God. Xiao Sheng turned towards the two men and started yelling at them, saying that his mom was tired of eating those dirty things, leaving them confused. While he was explaining that his mom wanted to eat a wolf cub, a creature's paw began emerging from the bottom of the hole. Xiao Sheng called one of the men trash because even in an important position in society, he was unable to capture the sacred beast. The man tried to explain himself, but Xiao Sheng told him that he didn't want to hear more excuses. At that moment, a voice coming from behind him started calling him. He turned towards the voice and began calling her mother, leaving both men somewhat confused. They looked at each other and became nervous. Suddenly, a bright light appeared and Xiao Sheng started heading towards it. He became happy and also explained to his mother how much he had missed her. Then, the figure of a woman appeared in front of him and praised him for being a good son. He explained to his mother that he was speechless because she had finally come to see her son. He couldn't help but hug her and through tears, he explained that all of this was his fault since he wasn't even able to get a wolf cub that his mother wanted so much. He asked his mother not to get angry and not to leave him alone, and he also asked her not to hit him because he would be a good boy from now on, promising her that he would bring that stinky man she wanted so much. While Xiao Sheng was crying, he thought his mother would be happy after eating that man and wouldn't be so mad at him. The woman's figure began to disappear and transformed into the body of a giant black mutant. While the mutant was hugging Xiao Sheng, he told him that he was hungry. At the same time on the farm, Tian Ran asked Bai again if he had stolen his parents' ashes. Upon hearing this, he was somewhat confused and asked if Tian Ran was joking with him. Tian Ran realized that Bai was not the person who had stolen his parents' ashes. He began to wonder how Bai was still alive if Xiao Hai had bitten him in the neck. Using the Eye of Truth, he saw that Bai was a human in an evil evolutionary phase, and now only had 118 hours of remaining life. He had 21 points of strength, 18 points of wisdom, 23 points of speed, and 18 points of resistance. According to the system evaluation, he was in an evil evolution state since he had used the power of evil evolution to save himself from dying. If he did not mitigate the fission of the evil mutant gene in his body within 118 hours, he would be dragged to hell by the same power that saved his life. Tian Ran stared at him intently and thought that the radiation plants had undergone a failed evolution, but due to Xiao Hai's perfect mutant gene and their mutual fusion, Bai's life had been temporarily saved. Quickly, he came to the conclusion that his purpose was to obtain Xiao Hai's perfect mutant gene. Tian Ran told Bai that even if he wasn't the person who had stolen his parents' ashes, his purpose didn't benefit him in any way, then he decided to end his life. The battle robots were activated and began aiming at Bai, but he asked them to wait for a moment. Tian Ran decided to stop the robots in order to hear what he had to say. Bai explained that if his parents' ashes were so important to him, then he could help him find the thief. He also told him that there was no solvable hatred between them, since he only wanted the evolutionary gene, and Tian Ran wanted to self-preserve. Bai asked why they couldn't turn this war into an agreement, Tian Ran began to think, and several seconds later, he ordered the battle robots to stop. Bai sighed and told him they could exchange resources. Tian Ran asked if he could help him recover the ashes, and Bai replied that he had a huge network of contacts, resources, and technology. If he wanted to find someone in Nanchang it would be much faster than if he did it himself. Tian Ran told him that if he wanted to obtain the evolution genes, this small bargaining chip was not enough, since even without his help, sooner or later he would end up finding the thief. He began to feel curious because Bai had emphasized his contacts and not those of the pharmaceutical companies ran. 
He asked Bai what his relationship with the pharmaceutical companies Ran was. Bai explained that he was not a member of the company Ran, and only worked there without having anything to do with the company's interests. He also explained that he didn't feel any hostility towards him, whether it was because he had killed Liang Tianyu or invaded the villa and attacked Ren, as it had nothing to do with him. As long as he could get what he needed, it was enough for him. He began to approach Tian Ran and told him that he could be his tool. Upon hearing this, he started to smile, thinking that Bai was very interesting. Uncle Nan tried to warn Tian Ran not to trust Bai, but he went ahead and as he approached him, he told him that he had useful tools. If they could obtain the evolutionary genes of the mutant, then they could save many lives. Bai extended his hand and said that everyone would benefit. Tian Ran looked into his eyes and smiled. Then he started getting closer to him, but instead of shaking hands, he simply walked past him and asked him to order his soldiers to drop all their weapons on the ground and crouch in a corner with their heads between their hands. Then he asked Bai to enter the house after doing this. Bai entered the house and was surprised to see Zio Hai's new mutant form. Han Han used the eye of good and evil and managed to see that Bai's body was glowing and green, which meant he had no bad intentions. She signaled to her brother to let him know everything was fine. Upon seeing this, he asked Bai not to be nervous and also revealed that Sayo Hai contained the gene he had been looking for. Upon knowing this, Bai was shocked and began asking if this was truly the perfect mutant beast. Tian Ran explained that based on its position, Sayo Hai had fused with human genes during the process of perfect mutation, and with its genetic aptitude they would be able to prevent the virus from evolving into something evil. Bai was even more amazed and he explained to him that Sayo Hai was the most perfect mutant beast he had ever seen in his life, since even the high-level mutated beast kings found in southern Xinjiang, who were fused with human genes, had only become unconscious monsters with crazy feeding instincts. While looking at Sayo Hai with admiration, he thought that not only did it have consciousness, but it was also capable of obeying human orders, which meant that if he could decipher the secrets of its genes, then he could produce more of them to save humans. Tian Ran clapped his hands and told Bai that the visit was over and also asked him to pay the deposit now. He took out his phone and asked for help in tracking a mobile number to investigate all call records and signal locations of the number in the last 10 days. Tian Ran wanted to test his worth as he was very demanding when it came to choosing his tools. Bai told him that telling him was easier said than done, so he asked Tian Ran to let him take a blood sample from Xiao Hai. If he didn't investigate the key as soon as possible, he would have less than five days left to live. Tian Ran replied that he still didn't have enough capital to negotiate the terms. With a smile, he advised Bai to work hard and find the thief as soon as possible. Bai sighed because he had no other choice. Several hours later, a helicopter landed on the farm and a hooded person got out and entered the house. He was Lan Ning, the best hacker. He asked Bai what was going on and why he hadn't come to his hideout instead of forcing him to come here, as he didn't like leaving his hideout. Bai handed him the phone and asked him to stop talking nonsense and check the location of the mobile number signal. Lan Ning looked at the phone and was disappointed to see that he had come all this way just to find out the location of a phone number. Bai also asked him to fix Tian Ran's house circuits as an apology for using the pulse weapon. Lan Ning opened his laptop, turned around, and left somewhat angry, wondering why Bai thought he was his boss when he was only his uncle. Seeing this, Tian Ran began to wonder if such a foul-mouthed hacker could be trusted. Lan Ning started working, and while he was hacking the mobile number, Tian Ran asked Bai how he had become a mutant with such an inhuman and supernatural form, called the Era of Gods. Bai realized that Tian Ran had read the contents of his USB memory, so he couldn't help but admit that he was faster than him in terms of human-level advancement. He explained that 10 days after the world changed, his team extracted a sample of the virus from a radioactive plant. His team discovered that the virus was the source of mutations in living beings that consumed infected plants. But through their experiments, they discovered that the V-shaped virus caused division of biological cells while dramatically increasing their probability of malevolent changes. This ultimately created deformed and short-lived monsters who simply continued to feed themselves. He also added that with Xiao Hai's genes, he would be able to obtain inspiration. Tian Ran asked him if his conclusions were based on extensive experiments conducted on humans infected with the virus. Bai replied that what he had done was not cruel, as countless data about human biology throughout history had been obtained from cold experiments on human beings. He also explained that before he arrived at the pharmaceutical company, they had already conducted experiments on humans under Liang Tianyu's instruction. So instead of enduring half-dead breathing, it was better for these experimental subjects to play their role and exhibit maximum value for science. Bai didn't mind being a guinea pig for a while before dying because even if he were to fail, it would still be very valuable data. Tian Ran replied that it was madness. Upon hearing this, Bai started laughing and then explained that the development of biology and science could only be achieved by stepping on people's bones. 
Then he looked into his eyes and told him that in such an apocalyptic future, nothing would change. After several hours, Lan Ning found the information and location of the mobile number and sent it to Tian Ran's email. When Tian Ran took out his phone from his pocket, he saw that he had a new email. He asked Lan Ning how he knew his email if he hadn't told him at any point. Lan Ning looked at him somewhat surprised and replied that they weren't in the past century anymore. He also mentioned that with just a photo of him, he was able to dig up all his information in just 10 minutes. Then he looked at Bai and revealed to him that he had heard what he had said about him. So he warned him that if he questioned his abilities again, he would hack into the camera of his mobile phone and livestream while he showered. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran was left speechless. Bai put his hand on his face and told Tian Ran that Lan Ning was very talkative but still had some professional ethics. Bai warned Lan Ning that if he continued causing trouble, he would reduce his funding. Upon hearing this, Lan Ning immediately apologized and explained that it wouldn't happen again and got to work. Several hours later, in an abandoned church being guarded by two cult members with firearms, one of the men started yawning. At that moment, he saw a small hummingbird circling around him. The hummingbird positioned itself in front of his face, making the man wonder how such large moths existed in such a cold climate. His companion warned him to be careful as it could be poisonous since there were many mutant creatures in the area. The man asked his companion if this moth was a mutant species of moth while they were talking. The hummingbird shot a sharp stinger into one of the men's forehead, causing him to lose consciousness. The other man tried to go help him, but just before he could make any movement, another hummingbird appeared and also shot a sharp stinger into his head, causing him to also lose consciousness. The person controlling the robotic hummingbirds was Tian Ran, who was on the roof of the abandoned church. While looking at the members of the cult unconscious on the ground, he asked them to sleep for a while. At the same time, inside the church, one of the cult members began to open a chest and gave thanks to the Lord God who loved them, and it was the true God who had created the universe and all other things. He also thanked him and praised him for having received his will with love and power. Then, the man opened the chest containing two giant seeds and asked God to grant them the reality of hope for reincarnation in an immortal body. This man was Xiao Sheng. Beside him were two cult members wearing tunics with a black symbol. In front of him were two kneeling cult members wearing blue tunics, and behind them were more cult members wearing green tunics. Xiao Sheng raised the chest in the air and decided to begin with the ceremony of reincarnation and circuit's name. He approached the chest to the two members wearing blue tunics, who took the two seeds and started eating them. Xiao Sheng explained to the other cult members that next, they would water the fruit with the nectar of sacrifice. Behind him was a corpse of a person split in half. After eating the seeds, the two men began devouring the flesh, creating a terrifying and unpleasant scene. Upon seeing this scene, Tan Ran couldn't help but feel anger and disgust at the same time. While the two cult members were completing their reincarnation ceremony, another cult member began approaching them. Someone shot one of the members in the head who was participating in the ceremony. Upon seeing this, the other cult member fell to the ground, leaving Xiao Sheng and the two members wearing black robes terrified. Upon hearing the sound of the gunshot, the members wearing green robes began to flee. Xiao Sheng started looking in all directions and asked loudly who dared to destroy the reincarnation ceremony. Looking up at the ceiling, he saw Tian pointing directly at him with a gun. He was very angry with the cult members because not only had they stolen his parents' ashes but they were also carrying out macabre reincarnation rituals. Xiao Sheng looked up at the ceiling and asked who he was and how dare he interrupt the ritual. Just as he finished speaking, Tan Ran gave him a murderous look and started yelling at him, telling him that he was his father, and he ordered the robot hummingbirds to kill all the members of the cult. The robot hummingbirds began to advance towards Xiao Sheng, and upon seeing this, the two members wearing black robes stood in front of him to protect him. In the blink of an eye, the robot hummingbirds killed off the members wearing green robes, then they took down one of the members wearing a black robe. One of the members wearing a green robe informed Xiao Sheng that even the entrance guards had been killed. At that moment, Tian Ran descended from the roof and landed on the ground. With a murderous aura, he told Xiao Sheng that at first he had only thought of him as a villain who stole ashes. But now, after witnessing the ritual, he believed they were a group of scum worse than animals. Xiao Sheng began to tremble and finally realized that the person in front of him was Tian Ran. He pointed his gun at Xiao Sheng's face and demanded that he hand over his parents' ashes. Xiao Sheng looked towards a lake and saw how an antenna of a creature started emerging from the corpse's mouth. He tried to buy time by telling Tian Ran that if he killed him now, then he would retrieve his parents' ashes. He also asked him if he didn't want the ashes, then he could kill him right now. Tian Ran started to get angry and asked him not to make him angrier. While he was distracted, the corpse of one of the men participating in the ceremony began to stand up. Tian Ran immediately felt a sinister aura, and as he turned back, he saw the sinister corpse of the man standing. 
Xiaosheng started laughing and told him that it was already too late, and he also added that now that his brothers had been born, no one could stop them. From the mouth of the man's corpse, a mutant with a single eye and sharp teeth began to emerge. Several seconds later, the mutant emerged from the man's corpse. It had sharp teeth and wings to fly, as well as a super hard exoskeleton. Looking to the side, Tian Ran saw that another mutant had also emerged from the other man's corpse who had eaten the seed. The two mutants began to approach Tian Ran with their bodies covered in disgusting slime. He looked at the mutants with disdain and decided to take out another gun from his inventory. While aiming at the mutants with his guns, he thought they were very ugly and truly striking. The mutants opened their mouths and started flying towards Tian Ran. Upon seeing this, he began shooting with both guns, but the bullets did not harm the mutants thanks to their very tough exoskeleton. The mutants attacked him, but he evaded the attack at the last second and thought that fighting against them was going to be really complicated since the bullets were unable to penetrate their exoskeleton. He decided to store the guns in his inventory and started searching for more lethal weapons. While fleeing from the mutants, he thought that rocket launchers and similar weapons should be enough. He decided to buy a rocket launcher, but when doing so, a system warning window appeared informing him that the purchase had failed due to insufficient points. Upon seeing this, Tan Ran remembered that he had spent all his points buying batches of seeds. He decided to test if the robot hummingbirds were capable of harming the mutants, so he ordered them to attack. The robot hummingbirds attacked the mutants, but their bullets were also unable to penetrate their tough exoskeleton. Seeing this, he was shocked as not even the firepower of the warrior hummingbirds was able to penetrate the mutants' tough skin. At first, he thought that this sect was an ordinary group taking advantage of the end of the world to make money and do harm, but he never imagined they had such powerful mutants. He thought that if he had known about these mutants' existence, then he would have brought combat robots. After fleeing for several minutes, he hid behind a corner, and while the mutants were searching for him, Xiao Sheng asked him where he was hiding. Xian Ran thought that confronting the mutants would be difficult now that he didn't have the albino corn anymore, and regular weapons couldn't penetrate the mutants' tough skin. He took out some explosives from his inventory and decided to blow up their eyes to buy himself some time. While he was distracted, one of the mutants approached the corner and saw him. The mutant attacked him, but Tian Ran dodged the attack at the last second. He was amazed to see how fast their attacks were. When he looked back, he saw the mutant's tail approaching him at high speed. The mutant hit him with its tail with tremendous force, causing him to fly and crash into the wall. The impact was so strong that it even broke one of the walls of the church, creating a giant smoke curtain. At the same time, someone started calling someone on the phone. A person answered the call, and this person was Yuan who was at Nancheng's military police station. The person who made the call was an elderly woman who informed Yuan that there had been a big explosion near her house and strange loud noises were heard. While the old woman was watching the smoke from the bombs that Tian Ran had used, she explained to Yuan that this disaster was being caused by mutant beasts, and she also asked them to come as soon as possible because she and her grandson were very scared. Yuan reassured her saying that they were going to go to the area right away, she also asked him about the location of the explosion site. Then she ordered the other officers to call the cleaning department since there could be level 2 or 3 mutant beasts outside of town. One of the police officers asked her if there really were mutant beasts of that level in town, he also added that he was eager to arrive so he could capture one and claim the reward. Yuan replied that if the mutants had caused a big explosion, then they should not underestimate the enemy who is no longer as easy to deal with as ordinary level 1 mutant beasts. At the same time in the church, while Tian Ran's body was slammed against the wall, in front of him were the two mutants with their wings and eyes destroyed, thanks to the explosions Tian Ran had used. Tian Ran took out a medicinal grade tomato from his inventory and thought that even though he had destroyed the mutants' eyes, he had only delayed their actions since now he had two broken ribs. The two mutants started approaching him, and Xiao Sheng explained to him that when death was imminent there was still time to eat. He also asked Tian Ran to be a good boy and let himself be devoured by his brothers without resisting since he was so severely injured. The mutants pounced on Tian Ran and in the process pushed his body with their heads causing it to go through the wall. Upon seeing this, Xiao Sheng thought that Tian Ran had died, but to his surprise, he saw that the bodies of the two mutants were stuck in the hole in the wall. The mutants tried to reach Tian Ran, who was on the other side in a room. Upon seeing that Tian Ran had entered the room, Xiao Sheng panicked and asked the mutants not to enter. While Tian Ran was looking at the mutants, he thought it had been very dangerous because if only the mutants had managed to hit him, he would already be dead. At that moment, he started hearing someone's voice, and upon hearing the voice, Xiao Sheng asked him not to harm his properties. When he turned around, he saw a bunch of chained women who, upon seeing him, began asking for his help. Upon seeing the mutants, the women began to tremble. Upon seeing the condition of the women, Tian Ran realized that the woman who had been sacrificed was a slave. He started to get angry and wondered how many people had been harmed by the cult. 
The mutants, upon realizing they were stuck, began biting the walls to escape, and upon seeing this, Tian Ran realized he was in danger. Upon seeing that the mutants were breaking through the wall and entering the room, the women started screaming. While Tian Ran was watching the mutants, he thought they shouldn't enter the room. At that moment, he saw something that caught his attention. In front of him there was a statue that had a sword in its hands. Upon paying a little attention to the room, Tian Ran realized that it was a warehouse which not only contained women but also looted food, gold ingots, jewelry and antiques. Looking at the statue, he saw that it had a sword and was surprised as he had never expected to see something so valuable hidden in this warehouse. Gaining momentum, he started jumping and in the blink of an eye reached the head of the statue. As he grabbed the sword, he noticed that it was a Tang Hengdao, a sword that had been forged with the most advanced technology in the world, making its blade strong and sharp. This makes the sword pinnacle of sword forging. Tian Ran sheathed the sword and thought that this sword was an absolute killer. Little by little, the mutants began to free their bodies from the wall, and upon realizing this, he thought that he didn't have much time left before the mutants freed themselves. While watching the mutants, he decided to test the sword and also wondered if it would be able to cut through the mutants. He unsheathed his sword and started advancing quickly towards the mutants, and once he reached them, he attacked them with the sword, making two precise cuts on their skin. The blade of the sword was so sharp that it could even cut through the tough exoskeleton of the mutants. However, it still wasn't enough since with Tian Ran's current strength, he couldn't kill them in a single blow. The mutants became enraged and slowly began to emerge from the hole in the wall. Upon seeing this, Tian Ran started running and thought about leaving the church first. While fleeing, he began taunting the mutants with the intention of making them follow him. Several seconds later, the mutants finally freed their bodies from the hole in the wall and started chasing Tian Ran. After running for several minutes, Tian Ran stopped, turned around, and thought that he had already distanced himself enough from the chained women. The mutants roared and upon seeing this, he assumed an offensive stance. The mutants pounced on him, but in a blink of an eye, he made three more cuts on them. The mutants tried to attack him again but thanks to his sword, he blocked their attacks. However, one of the mutants took advantage of his lowered guard and hit him in the chest using its tail, causing him to fly through air and crash into a wall. Due to the impact, Tan Ran was injured and while he was getting up with the support of his sword, he thought it would be difficult to cause fatal damage to the mutants. If he continued attacking them in the same spot, it would take too long, which would be very detrimental for him. So he decided to search for and attack their weak points. While he was distracted, one of the mutants started advancing at a high speed. Looking at the mutant's body, Tan Ran was able to see a weak point. Without wasting another second, he stood up and as he held his sword, his body began to be surrounded by a white aura. In the blink of an eye, just before the mutant could attack him, using his sword, Tian Ran stabbed it in its mouth, ending its life. Then using all his remaining strength, he cut off the mutant's head with his sword causing it to fall on the ground. Tian Ran became enraged as lightning bolts and a blue aura appeared around his body. With a penetrating gaze, he looked at the other mutant who immediately felt his incredible power and started trembling. At the same time, Xiao Sheng entered the warehouse and became furious upon seeing that Tian Ran not only had entered the warehouse but also had stolen his precious collector's sword. He thought that his brothers had already dealt with him, but at that moment, Tian Ran appeared behind him and started pointing the sword at him. Xiao Sheng began to question how he had killed the mutants if their shell was that of a worker ant and was impenetrable to bullets. He turned around, trembling, and advised Tian Ran not to harm him because if he did, the big shots in the city would go after him. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran became furious and replied that if he was capable of killing monsters, then why should he be afraid of some simple big shots in the city? And without thinking twice, using his sword, he ended Xiao Sheng's life with precise cuts. That would have happened if someone had not intervened because just before Tian Ran could end Xiao Sheng's life, someone fired a bullet that hit his sword, preventing him from attacking. Due to the shot, his sword started vibrating, and after several seconds, he was able to stop the vibrations and control the sword. Tian Ran was somewhat confused, and as he turned his head back, he saw a bunch of people approaching him. The person who had shot at Tian Ran's sword was none other than Yuan, who had entered the church with the secret police agents. While she was aiming at Tian Ran with her weapon, in a calm voice she ordered him to drop the sword on the ground. Despite hearing this order, Tian Ran simply continued to aim at Xiao Sheng while aggressively looking at Yuan. Seeing that the police officers had arrived at the church, Xiao Sheng crossed his arms to defend himself from Tian Ran's attack and explained to the officers that he wanted to kill them. He also asked them to shoot him as soon as possible so that his life would not be in danger. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran stared at Yuan and told her that he was not the person she should be aiming her weapon at. Upon hearing this, Yuan and the police officers were confused, and she asked him what he was talking about. Tian Ran simply continued pointing the sword at Xiao Sheng and asked Yuan to take a good look around. While Yuan was aiming the weapon at him, she looked to one side and saw two women chained up and trembling in fear. 
and looking to the other side, she saw more women chained up and hiding behind a pillar. She began to look at the chained women and started wondering what had happened here. While she was distracted trying to figure out how the chained women ended up here, one of the police officers caught her attention and started whispering to her, revealing that some of these women were the victims who had been reported missing previously. Ewan looked at the police officer and asked if he was sure, he replied that there was no way he could be mistaken since he had seen the photos of these women before. Upon closer inspection, she noticed that this room not only contained enslaved women but also supplies and jewelry. Seeing this, she became tense and started wondering what was happening in this church. At that moment, another police officer appeared and informed Ewan that he had uncovered an important case. Upon hearing this, she was surprised and turned towards him, asking for an explanation. He approached her and began whispering in her ear to inform her about the discovery of a female body with a grotesque form of death in the main hall. The agent also added that they found the bodies of several cult members who were shot, as well as two corpses of mutated beasts in the side corridor. Upon hearing this, Ewan was both confused and surprised at the same time. She started thinking about what she should do now. After thinking for several minutes, she turned around and stared at Tian Ran, then she asked him not to resist as everything was under control. She also ordered one of the agents to notify the bureau and the hospital, and also requested some cooperative units to bring all their available manpower for support. The police officers handcuffed Xiao Sheng, and while two of them were escorting him towards the exit, he started laughing. While they were walking away, Xiao Sheng turned around and looked at Tian Ran, making a face. Then he started whispering to mock him, asking what he could possibly do to someone as powerful as him. Upon hearing these words, Tian Ran's eyes filled with fury. With a murderous look, he stared at Xiao Sheng, and while his body was surrounded by a killing aura, he began unsheathing his sword. Little by little, he began to raise his sword to attack Xiao Sheng, but just before he could make a decision, someone appeared behind him and placed their hand on the sword, telling him that they had already met before and asked if he remembered. With a piercing gaze, Tian Ran turned around and asked who it was. The person behind him was Yuan. She reminded him of the car accident that happened three years ago and how they both went to identify the bodies. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran calmed down and remembered that she was the police officer who had been with him. Now that he was calm, he congratulated Yuan for having a good memory and for guessing what he had planned to do. She gave him advice on how to handle feelings of hatred. She explained that he should stay calm and think rationally in order to avoid acting recklessly. She introduced herself as Yuan Wen from the military police station on the south side. She also added that she knew Bai had already met him, and she revealed to him that his DNA from the car accident three years ago had led them to him. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran was surprised and began staring at Yuan. Seeing this, she kindly asked him to calm down and listen to her. She reminded him of Xiao Shang's words again and explained that it wasn't over yet, so they still couldn't kill him. She also explained to him that she knew his strength was extraordinary, and although she now had many police agents, she knew they would not prevent him from killing Xiao Sheng. She also mentioned that the Yan Wang Federation remained under the control of the military police and parliament, and it was not a place for lynchings. She asked Tan Ran to trust the military police as they did not forgive anyone who was guilty since it was their duty, and she also asked him to cooperate with the investigation and tell them everything he knew. Tian Ran thought for several seconds, and then decided to sheathe his sword. Upon seeing this, Yuan thanked him for his cooperation. At the same time, ambulances and police support arrived at the church, and nurses covered the women who had been kidnapped by the cult with white blankets and began taking them out of the church. Several doctors started attending to the women, and at the same time, their relatives arrived at the church and began crying upon finding them alive. While Yuan was escorting Tian Ran to her police car, one of the police officers caught her attention. She turned around and asked him what was happening. She walked away from Tian Ran and approached the officer. He began whispering and asked her if they should write a report about the dead cult members. She asked him to simply write that during the arrest, they encountered fierce resistance, so they were forced to respond with violence and in the process, the other party was seriously injured and died. While Tian Ran was looking at them, he heard the entire conversation thanks to his highly developed hearing from eating the super crops. Once Yuan finished talking to the police officer, she looked at Tian Ran and with a smile made the OK sign and told him they could continue. Tian Ran started following Yuan, and at that moment, a stretcher containing a corpse passed by. He turned around and upon seeing a woman's hand, he realized it was the same woman who had been sacrificed by the cult. Upon seeing this, he couldn't help but become enraged as he hadn't been able to avenge the woman's death. Yuan looked at him and noticed that he was very angry. Tian Ran looked away and decided to continue on his way and not think about the cult as it was making him furious. But at that moment, someone caught his attention to thank him, 
and when he looked in the direction of the voice, he saw a blonde-haired woman who thanked him again for being her savior. This woman was one of the women who had been kidnapped by cult members, and while her mother was covering her with a white sheet, she smiled and with tears in her eyes. She explained to him that if it weren't for the explosion he had caused, which brought the military police, they would all have been sold as toys to wealthy people and eventually become food for mutant animals. Upon hearing the word toy, Tian Ran and Yuan were shocked. She asked the woman if she knew anything else. The woman put her hand under her chin and, while looking at the ground, revealed to them that she used to be a member of the Mutual Aid Society. However, they lied to her by telling her it was just a mutual aid society and that by bringing people into the cult, she could buy food at low prices. She also added that a few days ago, after discovering the true purpose of this mutual aid society, she tried to escape. But the other members noticed and locked her up. She also revealed to them that before being locked up, she was able to see the location of the cult's transaction logbook. Upon hearing this, Yuan was shocked as she thought that the transaction logbook could help them uncover the identity of the person behind it all. She asked the woman if she could tell her the exact location of the book with details. While the woman was revealing to Yuan and Tian Ran the location of the transaction logbook, someone started staring at them through the rearview mirror. The person who was looking at them was a police officer who was smoking a cigarette. The police officer let out the smoke from his mouth and while he was looking at Tian Ran and Yuan, he told his partner that the Holy Lord controlled everything. They started the car and began to leave the abandoned church while the other police officers and nurses were attending to the women. Several hours later, Yuan and Tian Ran arrived at the military police station. She took Tian Ran to an interrogation room that was heavily monitored by two security cameras. While Tian Ran sat in the chair, he rested his arms behind his head and began calling out to Yuan. He started feeling sleepy and began yawning, as Yuan had been interrogating him for several hours to see if he had any connection with the cult members. Tian Ran asked Yuan if he could leave, while leaning back in his chair with his arms behind his head. He closed his eyes and explained to her that he still had many things to do at home. At the same time, Yuan was in another room with a police sergeant. She explained that she did not agree with this way of handling the matter. Both were in the room right next to the investigation room where Tian Ran was sitting on a chair with his arms behind his head. This room had a one-way glass that allowed the police department's investigators to monitor and listen to the conversations of the interrogated individuals. While Sergeant was looking at Tian Ran, he explained to Yuan that since ancient times, merits and demerits had been irreconcilable, and therefore, even if meritorious acts had been performed, it could not hide the fact that a crime had been committed. Yuan tried to persuade the sergeant, but just before she could speak, the sergeant explained that Tian Ran was only a citizen and did not have any power that allowed him to judge and kill others instead of the law. Yuan simply stared at the sergeant and didn't say a single word. After several minutes, while she was looking at the ground with a lost gaze, she explained to him that it was true that Tian Ran had no right to take justice into his own hands. She also added that he wouldn't have had any rights if the police officers had found the missing women before him. She asked the sergeant if the higher-ups had already issued an arrest warrant for Tian Ran. While the sergeant was looking at Tian Ran through the one-way glass, he explained to Yuan that Bureau Yang was waiting for a response from the city council. He crossed his arms and explained to her that it was unlikely that the high-ups would tolerate the presence of such a dangerous man like Tian Ran. Yuan looked at the sergeant and commented that currently, the world had changed and military and police forces were insufficient, and she also added that now it was difficult to say what the future of law would be like. She explained to him that even though the higher-ups hadn't responded yet, it was too hasty to condemn Tian Ran. She looked down and decided to give the sergeant some advice. She crossed her arms and, while staring directly at the sergeant, addressed him as Sergeant Chen and told him that he was panicking because of his dereliction of duty. She began to stare into his eyes and revealed that she had already discovered this a long time ago, so she had prepared in advance and had directly sent Tian Ran's violation of the law evidence to the leader's desk. She also added that she had done this to make it easier for her sergeant. She looked the sergeant in the eyes and told him that this kind of peaceful treatment would not bring justice to the women who had been murdered and trafficked by cult members. Upon hearing Yuan's words, Chen became furious and while pointing his finger at her, he started looking at her aggressively with an evil aura. He ordered her to watch her tongue and added that he didn't care about her background because ultimately he was the sergeant here and she was just his subordinate. After saying these words, Chen gave her the order to arrest the suspect Tian Ran and keep him in custody until further notice. Yuan simply stayed silent, listening to Sergeant Chen's orders without saying a word. As he was her superior, she couldn't refute his orders, or else she would be fired. While Chen was scolding Yuan, two people opened the door and entered the surveillance room. One of them asked Chen what he was doing. Immediately upon hearing the voice, Chen's expression drastically changed as he knew he had gotten himself into trouble. Quickly, Chen turned around and asked his superior what he was doing here. The two people who had entered the surveillance room were also part of the police department. 
the older man with white hair, who had his hands crossed behind his back, was chief inspector of the military police department in Shandong province, named Yuan Zhenghong, and the man next to him carrying a briefcase was senior police officer called Yuan Yi. While both were walking towards Yuan and Chen, Yuan Zhenghong thought that Yang Yang was teaching Yuan very well, so he couldn't help but praise her for becoming more and more a promising police officer. Zhenghong mocked Chen by telling him that he wasn't very good at catching criminals, but rather at creating enemies. Upon hearing this, Chen started to get nervous and with a trembling voice explained to him that there was nothing he could do since this was an order from the higher-ups. Zhenghong approached and while staring at him intently, named two higher-ups called Yang Yang and Wang Dongchuan and asked which of these two higher-ups had given him that order. Yang Yang was the director of the military police bureau on the south side, and Wang Dongchuan was the mayor of the south side. Several seconds passed and Chen did not respond. Seeing this, Zheng Hong simply started to walk away from him, and his punishment ordered him to stand still and recite out loud all the police rules 20 times. Once Zheng Hong distanced himself from Chen, he turned around and started walking in the opposite direction while cursing Yuan. While Zheng Hong was approaching Yuan, he explained to her that Bureau Yang had roughly told him over the phone what had happened at the church. He asked her if she could take them to the room where Tian Ran was. Upon hearing this, she informed him that he was in cubicle 3 and also asked them to follow her. Several minutes later, while Tian Ran was lying in the chair and lost in his thoughts, he looked back and saw Yuan next to Zheng Hong and Yuan Yi. Zheng Hong closed his eyes and with a smile asked if it was Tian Ran. Upon seeing them entering the interrogation room, Tian Ran stopped lying in the chair and answered yes. Zheng Hong approached the table and while pushing the chair away from it to be able to sit down, introduced himself as Yuan Zhengdong, chief inspector of the Hangdong Provincial Department. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran became alert and thought that he had gotten himself into serious trouble. He crossed his arms and explained that if this case required a high-ranking official like him to come and personally interrogate him, it meant that he couldn't easily leave here. Zheng Hong started laughing and asked him not to get nervous because he was only here because he wanted to show him a confidential file. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran was surprised as he didn't know why a high-ranking official would want someone like him to see a confidential file. Zheng Hong took out a folder containing confidential information that was considered to be a top secret file. While he held the folder in his hands, he shared his thoughts with Tian Ran about how he believed that he must be very curious about the changes in the two mutated beasts they had encountered at the church. He told him that this information was now available to him. Tian Ran took the folder of confidential files and as he looked at Zheng Hong, he became confused because he didn't know why Zheng Hong was giving him a folder containing highly classified confidential information. With a cheerful smile, Zheng Hong explained to him that this folder contained information that was perfect for people like him. Deep down, he already knew that Tian Ran was also a mutant. Little by little, Tian Ran began to take out the classified files that were inside the folder. As he pulled them out completely, he saw photos of several mutants with human faces on their bodies. Upon seeing these images, Tian Ran was shocked. When he pulled out another file, he was shocked to see a mutant with human faces on its body devouring humans. Zheng Hong clenched his fists and while looking at Tian Ran, he explained that the photo he was looking at was of a mutated beast that had been found in the Koringma Mountains by a patrol officer five days ago. He revealed that once the police officers surrounded the mutant, they realized it was feeding on humans. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran looked into Zheng Hong's eyes and was shocked as he had never imagined that a mutant would evolve to the point of feeding on humans. Zheng Hong also mentioned that later on, police agents found traces of human faces on the mutant's back. He also revealed that the mutant was becoming more intelligent, sometimes even outsmarting the police troops. He asked Tian Ran if he knew what this meant. While looking at the confidential files, he told him that the intelligence and actions of these mutants were becoming increasingly similar to those of humans. He asked him if the mutants had been able to unlock the genetic locks. Zheng Hong put his hands under his chin and replied that it was correct, and explained that these mutants were no longer limited to merging with genes from different animals to evolve their physical bodies, but they had also managed to merge with human genes to gain intelligence. Zheng Hong believed that a new species was being born. He explained to Tan Ran that they called these creatures who had evolved advanced intelligence beast kings. He stared at Tan Ran and told him that they had already found at least five cases of these perfect mutant beasts in Yan Wang, and this number would continue to grow. After reading all the information from the confidential files, Tian Ran began to save them inside the folder and asked Zheng Hong why he was telling him these secrets. At that moment, he signaled Yuan Yi and several minutes later, he brought a glass capsule containing two mutant eggs and placed them on the table. Tian Ran began to stare fixedly at the eggs and it didn't take long for him to realize that they were the same eggs that the cult members who had turned into mutants had eaten. 
While pointing at the eggs with his finger, he asked Jeng Hong if they were the same eggs that the cult members had eaten. He replied yes and explained that these were two mutant eggs that had not yet hatched, these were the same eggs that the two cult members had eaten, who died after being shot by him, and once the two cult members died, the eggs inside their bodies stopped hatching. The investigators at the police laboratory had removed the eggs from the bodies of the two cult members and had been studying their genome. Tian Ran was surprised and didn't say a word, continuing to listen. At that moment, Zheng Hong revealed to him that the genomes of the eggs were mostly represented by insect and animal genes, but there was also a portion of human genes within the genome of the mutant eggs. Tian Ran was shocked to hear this and several seconds later asked where he was going with this conversation. Zheng Hong looked into his eyes and revealed that in the southern part of the city, there was a hidden mutant beast king who was creating his own species. Upon hearing Zheng Hong's words, he became quite confused and while staring into his eyes, he asked him what he was talking about. With a worried look in his eyes, he asked how it was possible for someone with the power of the Beast King to remain hidden in the city without being discovered. Zheng Hong clasped his hands together and revealed that this involved another problem that was related to the account book found by the police agents in the abandoned church. Upon hearing this, he became even more confused and while staring into his eyes, he asked if they had really found the accounting book. Zheng Hong simply nodded to indicate that yes, then explained that although the King of Beasts had some intelligence, it was still far from evolving to the normal level of human beings. This meant that it was not possible to create an organization in just a few days after the start of the mutation. He also added that unless some humans had helped him. Just before he could finish speaking, Tian Ran interrupted him and asked if he was saying that someone was on the side of the mutant beasts. He was quite confused, so he also asked why someone would do this. Zheng Hong explained that the reason was still unknown. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran stared into his eyes with a worried expression and asked why he was telling him all this. He placed a hand on the table and while tapping it with the tip of his finger, he asked him to allow him to give him an idea of the current situation. He explained that he trusted him to make decisions more in line with the circumstances. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran stared into his eyes and asked him what he meant by that. Zheng Hong revealed to everyone that, given Tian Ran's violent attack, which had resulted in the death of several people and caused serious negative social consequences and impacts, it was specifically ordered for the military and police departments to arrest him according to national law. He also added that an execution notice had already been issued for the detained Lai Tian Ran. Upon hearing these words, both Tian Ran and Yuan were shocked. She reached out her hand towards the inspector and asked him to wait. Just before she could finish speaking, he raised his hand indicating to her to remain silent. At that moment, Tian Ran clenched his fist and forcefully hit the table, leaving everyone surprised. He rested his arm on the table and assumed an aggressive posture, while his body emitted a sinister aura. He stared intensely at Zheng Hong with a penetrating gaze and asked him what serious consequences and negative social influences he had caused by killing the individuals from the cult who were carrying out demonic rituals. He also added that these laws and police rules seem ridiculous to him. While lowering his hand, he maintained eye contact with him and in a calm voice told him that young people should not be so angry. He also asked him to listen carefully to what he had to say first. He decided to tell everyone the truth and revealed to them all that in the current world. In the future, it was possible that military and police forces of cities might not be able to protect all civilians. He also added that nevertheless, in any case, before the collapse of the existing social system, authorities would still remain the most powerful. He rested his chin on his hands and revealed to everyone that, according to the speed of evolution of mutant beasts at this moment, the implementation of military and political integration at a federal level was an inevitable trend, and as a consequence, the military regions would be responsible for taking control of the cities. He also added that the military and police forces in the military district were different from urban military and police forces since they had zero tolerance towards behaviors that violated the law, they were as cold as war machines. He explained to Tian Ran that now they could protect him and erase his record. But once the military district took control of the city, they would no longer have that right. Tian Ran leaned both arms on the table and while he was staring into his eyes, he asked what exactly he meant. Zheng Hong stopped leaning on the table and explained to him that it was very simple. He asked him to join them. He leaned his arms on the table again and, while his hands were intertwined, he revealed to Tian Ran that he could give him a privileged identity. In this way, even if the future military district took control of the city, he could also have access to special powers. Upon hearing this, Yuan began to stare at Tian Ran and clenched her teeth tightly as she didn't know if he would accept. He stared into Zheng Hong's eyes with a penetrating gaze and asked him if he wanted him to join the police or the army. 
He explained to him that having an official status was not going to be something bad for him, since this way, he and his family could obtain security. Upon hearing this, Yuan sighed as she felt quite relieved. Yuan Yi saw her sigh and became somewhat confused. Tian Ran slightly crouched down and while touching his mouth, began to stare at the ground and started thinking about what he should do with the proposal Zheng Hong had made to him. He asked him to give him several minutes to think about it. Several hours later, while Yuan was holding Tian Ran's sword and some papers with both hands, she handed the sword back to Tian Ran. Then, she asked him to give her his answer by the day after tomorrow morning at the latest regarding whether he would join the police force or not. She looked into his eyes and explained that if he agreed, then he should fill out the application form. However, if he disagreed by the day after tomorrow, she would come to find him along with the law enforcement team. Tian Ran became confused and asked her how someone so beautiful could say such cold words. He also asked what had happened to the promise she had made about protecting him. Upon hearing this, she pushed the sword and papers against Tian Ran's chest and explained to him that flattery would be of no use since once he joined the police and army, all of this would no longer be a problem. He took the papers and stepped back. While staring into her eyes, he explained that he would give her an answer in two days. At the same time, as they were talking, a police officer who was accompanying several handcuffed prisoners passed by. Both turned to look at the prisoners, and as they were slowly moving away, Tian Ran looked at them with eyes of surprise and asked Yuan if all these prisoners were people who had participated in the transactions recorded in the ledger. She replied yes, and upon hearing this, he took a closer look at two of the prisoners and realized that they seemed somewhat familiar to him. Upon remembering this, an image of the two men came to his mind. He quickly realized that they were members of Nancheng's municipal council. When thinking about this, his eyes filled with anger. Both men felt Tian Ran's gaze and turned towards him to see what was happening. He finally realized that the sect leader had said something that had turned out to be true. At first, he had only thought that the members were some wealthy businessmen and celebrities. While he was watching them walk away, he thought that he had never expected even members of parliament to be involved in the cult. While holding the sword with one hand, he stared at them and began to wonder if these people had only been involved in the buying and selling of humans. While Yuan was looking at him, she remained speechless and started wondering what he was thinking. He began to look at them with a serious expression as he realized that those two men were already on the opposite side of humans. Several hours later, Tian Ran returned to the estate, went out to the orchard, and applied the growth agent to the sacred fruit of divine level 4 enhancement, which had a growth rate of 68%, had a good growth status, and only had 62 hours left to mature. He asked his little sister Han Han if she would help him if he decided to join the army or the police. In a matter of seconds, the growth agent took effect on the sacred fruit of divine level 4, causing it to slowly begin to grow, resulting in an increased growth rate of up to 78%, and reducing the remaining time for maturity to just 32 hours. Han Han opened her eyes and watched the growth of the sacred fruit for several minutes, then smiled and answered yes to the question Tian Ran had asked her earlier. While Tian Ran was crouched down next to the sacred fruit, he turned towards her and looked into her eyes. With a sincere look, he explained to her that if he joined the police force, he wouldn't be able to be with her frequently. He also asked her not to cry at night when he wasn't there. Upon hearing this, she began to look down and in a soft voice explained that she was already aware of this. Then she approached him, and while staring into his eyes, clenched both fists, and explained to him that she hoped her big brother wouldn't give up on what he wanted because of her. Upon hearing these words, Tian Ran was quite surprised as he never imagined that a little girl would have these thoughts. He reached out his hand towards her head and while he was caressing her, she looked down at the ground and reminded him that three years ago, he had quit his job to adopt her and return to manage the farm. She also added that she had been a burden and a big problem for her older brother. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran asked her not to be silly and also added that she hadn't dragged him into anything since it had all been voluntary on his part. While he was stroking her head, she looked at the ground and with a serious expression explained to him that Han Han didn't want to be protected all the time and wanted to grow up quickly. She clenched both fists and while looking directly into his eyes with a pleasant gaze, she explained to him that she would always support him no matter what choice he made. She also added that now she had Zio Hai accompanying her everywhere, and also had Grandpa Nan taking care of her so she was no longer afraid. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran looked into her eyes and couldn't help but feel proud of his little sister. He then put his arm around her neck and explained to her that he was proud that his little sister had grown up. Upon hearing this, she closed her eyes and became very happy. Then he addressed her as a young adult and explained to her that from now on, she would be in charge of watering the divine tomatoes with the growth agent. 
Upon hearing this, she began to cry because she didn't want to water the plants. At the same time, a man wearing a black suit approached some cells, and as he walked softly, tension started to build in the atmosphere. Several minutes later, the man descended to the ground floor where all the inmates were located, and slowly his figure became visible through the door. The man started approaching the cell of an inmate who was sitting down. In one hand, he held a mutant egg that was emitting an evil aura. The inmate who was sitting and handcuffed inside the cell was bald and wearing a white tunic, also being part of the cult. Upon seeing the man in a black suit approaching his cell, the man inside the cell started laughing. This man was none other than Xiao Sheng, the leader of the cult sect. He joined his hands together and while looking at the ground with a lost gaze, he smiled and asked the man in black where it was. At that moment, the man approached his cell, crouched down, and brought the mutant egg closer under the bars. Slowly, the egg began to roll until it reached Xiao Sheng's feet, who was sitting on a chair and looking at the ground. Then, while laughing, he reached his hand towards the ground and picked up the egg, creating tension in the atmosphere. He began to stare fixedly at the egg, which was emitting an evil aura. With a smile, he slowly approached the mutant egg towards his mouth. In a matter of seconds, he put it in his mouth while still laughing with an evil laugh. The next day, Tian Ran pricked Xiao Bai's shoulder with a blood collection needle to extract a little bit of blood. He approached Lan Ning and while staring into his eyes, he handed him the blood sample and explained that this was the sample he had promised to him and his boss Bai. Lan Ning took the blood sample and thanked him. Then, as he touched his glasses with his left hand, he stared at Xiao Bai and asked Tian Ran if this was the perfect mutant monster. He also added that it didn't seem to have drastic changes in its body or vital signs like the other beast kings. He came to the conclusion that Xiao Bai was not as powerful as the other beast kings. Upon hearing this, Xiao Bai started looking at him aggressively. Tian Ran looked into his eyes and explained to him that perfect mutation had many directions. He also added that the mutation directions of existing beast kings were not necessarily correct. He also asked Landing if the correct path towards perfect mutation was simply increasing power or changing physical form or intellectual growth. He revealed to him that the address of the variation was different, so naturally it seemed impossible for it to be completely consistent. While touching his glasses with his hand, Lan Ning replied that he was correct and also added that he had jumped to hasty conclusions. He explained to him that the genetic makeup of each organism was different, even though the same perfect genes was used in different organisms and could have different effects. Tian Ran put his hands in his pockets and while looking into his eyes, asked about Bai's health status. Upon hearing this, Lan Ning began to touch his head and change the topic of conversation. Then he asked Tian Ran if he had destroyed another sect and gotten into trouble again. He also added that if he didn't deliver the blood sample soon, Bai would scold him a lot. Seeing that Lan Ning didn't want to talk about Bai's health condition, Tian Ran simply decided to stop discussing the matter. At the same time, in the laboratories where Bai was located, several doctors performed an operation on him to remove his bone spurs. However, once the operation was over, they saw that the bone spurs had grown back in less than 30 minutes after being removed. Now, compared to before, they were growing faster, so the doctors came to the conclusion that it was impossible to remove the bone spurs through surgery. While Bai was lying on the stretcher, he slightly opened his eyes and saw the three doctors talking about him. At that moment, someone addressed Bai as boss and caught his attention. With the little strength he had left, he looked in the direction where the voice came from. The person who had called him was none other than Lan Ning. While holding a suitcase, he stared at Bai and the doctors and explained that he had returned with the blood samples. Upon hearing this, Bai slowly began to rise from the stretcher and stared into his eyes, asking the doctors to analyze the sample as soon as possible since he only had 24 hours left to live. The scientists took the sample and started analyzing it. Several hours later, a scientist went to Bai's room and used a giant hologram screen to explain that there were changes in the arrangement of the 20th pair of chromosomes. He also added that according to the analysis of blood cells, Xiao Bai's skeletal density was more than 10 times that of ordinary dogs, and he also had 79 chromosomes, one more than the average for dogs. Bai simply stayed listening to the scientist's explanation without saying anything. Several seconds later, he smiled and while looking at the screen, he realized that Xiao Bai had unlocked the genetic code. Another scientist approached him and explained that the chromosome was going to greatly increase size, strength, speed, and bone density. The other scientist explained that this extra chromosome could almost be called divine. Upon hearing this, Bai's expression changed drastically as he couldn't believe what he was hearing. He got up from the stretcher and approached the screen, 
and one of the scientists explained to him that these genes were the genes of a perfect mutant, not genetically altered material in these creatures created by the virus in V4. The other scientist also approached him and explained that although the success rate was not as high, they could try to replicate it. Upon hearing this, Bai began to stare at the ground and ordered the scientists to replicate the genes right away. At the same time on the farm, Tian Ran went to the orchard, and a system window informed him that level 4 cherry tomato had entered its ripening stage, and also asked him to verify crop analysis. Upon seeing this, Tian Ran requested an analysis from the system, and another status window appeared above the tomato plants. These plants were level 4 divine cherry tomato profit plants, with a growth rate of 95%. The growth status was good, and the time to maturity was 8 hours. While he was looking at the system window, he was surprised because now he could see the effect of a divine fruit in its ripening stage. He asked for information from the system, causing several windows to appear. The system informed him that there were various types of evolution paths after consuming a level 4 fruit. The first one was the atavistic type. The creatures that consumed them awakened the genetic memory of the bloodline genes, improved the original data of their bodies, acquired ancient talents of their race, and had an activation probability of 80%. The second type was the intelligent brain. After consuming the fruit, the human body undergoes changes in electromagnetic fields allowing it to obtain abilities such as hypnotism, mind reading and control over electronic machinery. The activation probability was 4%. The third one was the divine type, where the human body developed foreign abilities such as immortality, wings and extreme speed. The reactivation probability was 4%. The fourth one was of ancient divine type. The consumer would obtain divine abilities such as controlling the weather, water, fire, and other substances, with an activation probability of 0.4%. While Tian Ran was looking at the system windows, his expression changed drastically to surprise as he was left speechless. He clenched his fist tightly and while staring at the system window, he smiled and thought that both the intelligent brain type and the divine type were tempting enough but the probability of obtaining atavistic evolution was too high. He crossed his arms, closed his eyes, and thought that if he reached the most useless evolution of all, the atavistic type, it would be a great loss. So he decided it would be better to ask the system. He asked the system if he could reset by eating a level 4 fruit and evolving into an atavistic type. The system replied that the host could continue eating level 4 fruits, and also added that if other types of evolution were activated after consuming the fruits, the host could choose to keep any type of evolution. Upon hearing this, Tian Ran couldn't help but smile and thought that in other words, as long as he had enough divine gain fruits, he could evolve into the ancient divine type. As night fell, Yuan went to Zheng Hong's office. He turned towards her and while staring into her eyes, asked if Tian Ran had accepted. She approached him and explained that Tian Ran had just contacted her and told her that he would send the application form tomorrow. Upon hearing this, Zheng Hong couldn't help but smile. He looked into Yuan's eyes and explained to her that the trip he had made to the south side hadn't been in vain after all. Yuan asked him if he was going to leave again. Zheng Hong turned around, put his hands behind his back and while looking at the shelf, he explained to her that his superiors had already urged him enough, so he was going to return after finishing the case of the cult members. He also added that he had only come to the south side because he had been specially appointed by the Ministry of National Security to recruit special talents. Yuan approached him and explained that they had already arrested Congressman Lai and Guo for over 10 hours, but the police department still hadn't taken any action. She also added that she had a feeling something was wrong. Zheng Hong asked her if there had been any movement from Wang Dongchuan. Yuan stared into his eyes and replied yes, advising him to stay on the south side for a few more days. Then, she looked to the side with a worried expression and explained to him that she was feeling a bit uncomfortable. At the same time, some small black bugs emerged from the well located in the cult member's hideout. Next to the well stood a man wearing a black suit, which was creating tension in the atmosphere. The small black bugs approached the man and started wriggling. This man was not human, but a mutant as he had half of his face in mutant form. He began to stare fixedly at the bugs and realized what was happening. The next day, the sun rose and Tian Ran opened the gates of the estate. In his hand, he held the application form as he was going to deliver it to Yuan. He left the estate and started walking. At that moment, he looked to one side and was surprised to see what was in front of his eyes. Near the estate, a person's feet were dripping blood. At first, Tian Ran was paralyzed trying to understand what had happened. 
Then, upon closer inspection, his expression changed drastically. He began to stare at the person hanging there with eyes full of surprise. This person was none other than the girl he had saved when he went to the abandoned church. He couldn't believe that someone had done something so evil like this. Someone had hanged the girl and took care of placing her body near Tian Ran's farm to warn him not to mess with them. As the girl's blood continued to drip, Tian ran through the form on the ground and started running towards her corpse to check what had happened to her. This is the end of the video, if you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.